On our rainy Halloween in Lawrence, Kansas, both Kansas State and Kansas need big things from their quarterbacks. The Wildcats, Michael Bishop, the Jayhawks, Zach Wegner. The Texas Longhorns against the Texas A&M Aggies. The Oklahoma Sooners against the Oklahoma State Cowboys. The Big 12 offers great interstate robberies. And today, Kansas and Kansas State collide for the 96th time. The Wildcats claim the nation's number four ranking, while the Jayhawks have exploded offensively behind the legs of David Winbush, who helped beat Colorado last week. Emotions will run sky high today in Lawrence. Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler present Big 12 football. Today, the Sunflower State Showdown. It's fourth-ranked Kansas State against the Kansas Jayhawks from Memorial Stadium in Lawrence. A glance at the North standings. Kansas State hopes to improve to 8-0 for the first time in school history. Kansas looks to knock off another nationally ranked team for the second consecutive week. And hi once again, everybody. Happy Halloween. Along with Dave Lapham, I'm Drew Goodman. Dave will go out trick-or-treating a little bit <laughs> later on. Kansas excited. Last week, they had their biggest win in a while, 33-17 over Colorado. And the hero was a guy about the size of the guy who delivers your newspaper every day. Well, that's right, Drew. David Winbush, 5'7". He'll be 170 pounds today because he's going to be soaking wet. He's hard to find behind those 6'5", 300 pound offensive linemen. You can't play peekaboo with him on Halloween here off of the blocks or he's gone. He's got wiggle. He won't take that flush hit. And the numbers that he put up against Colorado, pretty good run defense that Colorado presents were outstanding. Yeah, 268 yards. He was terrific. Coaches love to talk about the three phases of football, offense, defense, and special teams. The thing that separates Kansas State is, Dave, they're awesome in all three. Just like the New York Yankees, this is the most balanced team in the NCAA. They lead the country in scoring and fewest points allowed. Net punting determines field position. They're best in the country in that area as well. Plus 12 in the turnover margin. That gives them 12 more possessions than the opposition and that stands them in good stead as well. They are dynamic. Kansas State and Kansas, one of the oldest rivalries in college football. For Kansas, they'll have to slow down all-time ground gainer Eric Hickson and one of the guys who will be looking in on Hickson, Dion Rayford, the Wildcats, and the Jayhawks. Come on back to Lawrence. <laughs> Big 12 football is brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper, this is the taste. Stand by the all-new BMW 3 Series. Everything your car does well, it does brilliantly. Halloween in Lawrence, Kansas. Time to check in with Jim Knox. Knox Okay, thanks a lot, Drew. A number of key players will be playing hurt today in this rainy, soggy Memorial Stadium turf. We'll begin on Kansas State side of the football. Michael Bishop, I talked to him moments ago. He told me he's not quite 100% with that hip injury. He will wear a flak jacket today. Meanwhile, linebacker Jeff Kelly did not play last week against Iowa State due to a strained knee. He said he's ready to go today. The knee is fine. Meanwhile, Travis Oaks, the other linebacker, he is out today, folks. He didn't even suit up. He has a hip pointer. Other side the football. You have Kansas quarterback Zach Wegner sustained a concussion last week. He said the head is fine. He's looking forward to going against that K-State defense. And Harrison Hill, wide receiver, out last week with a hamstring injury. He's ready to go today. So a number of key players are hurt, but they're looking forward to the Sunflower State Showdown. Up next, it's the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Game of the Week. Kansas against Kansas State. A lot of hearty folks on Halloween here in Lawrence, Kansas at Memorial Stadium. Fourth-ranked Kansas State against the University of Kansas. 96th meeting, 88th consecutive. Martin Gramatica will kick it deep. Kansas State won the toss and deferred to the second half. Mitch Bowles watch it, watches it take a sloppy hop through the end zone and out. Zach Wegner who suffered a concussion last week early in the football game against Colorado and went out. 
will be the starter again this week. And his offensive line has played a whole lot of football together, and they're very good. Justin Glasgow is enormous at close to 320 pounds. The two tackles are good in Lees and Dercher. Harrison Hill, you heard Jim Knox talk about him. He is back in the lineup. He has a hamstring injury. They need a big performance from the redshirt freshman. From the 20-yard line, Kansas to operate. And a timeout being indicated immediately by Jason Gully. The tight end stood up. Well, they have 12 men on the field. They did. They had two tight ends on the football field. On the same side. We'll come back. 48 degrees, and the forecast is for rain throughout the day. Dave, I don't know if I've ever seen that. Usually, if you're going to know one play, it's the first snap of the game. Well, two tight ends, they're opposite, usually on opposite sides of the line of scrimmage, but they were right next to each other, and that made the 12th. <laughs> Hand it to Winbush, and he gets maybe a yard. Knocked down by Mark Simino. Here's a defensive front for one of the best defenses in college football, not only in 1998, but really the last few years. Darren Howard really gets after the quarterback. That defensive line is very healthy. The linebackers, not so. Jeff Kelly returns. Litton will start for Oaks. Travis Oaks out for the first time after 40 consecutive starts. Jerry Cooper, the strong safety, is a wonderful player. Here's a delay. Winbush keeps his feet momentarily, and then tackled from behind. They swarm to the football due to Kansas State Wildcats. That time it was Darren Howard from behind, so it'll be third down and eight. That's one of the things Kansas thought they could do against Kansas State, believe it or not, Dave, is run a little bit. Well, they, they brought a receiver in motion. They brought Fulton in motion, and he blocked up the football field for one of the safeties, and that's what they want to try to do. The wide receiver come in motion, either block a linebacker and let, at that point, let a guard get on the safety, or the wide receiver will get up on the safety himself. Jeff Kelly was dis disruptor on that play at linebacker. Henry Childs flanks out to the short side. Third and eight, Wagner in trouble. Big trouble. He'll go down at the 10-yard line. What a start for Jeff Kelly and his defensive mates. Well, Kansas State this year, not as many quarterback sacks in the, as in the past, but they get started with one right here. You get in third and long, they're going to blitz you. They're going to come after you. Kelly, Simino, everybody blitzes. Come clean. Simino is the first one into the pocket. Now Wagner, he's Ben Gazzara. He's running for his life, and he's just collapsed on the perimeter. Great inside-out pursuit. Everybody for Kansas State on their feet and running to the football. Kansas State has David Allen back at the Kansas 40. They should get wonderful field position. Allen gets away from it, and the punt out of bounds at the 41-yard line. That is a good job by Tyler. They want a directional punt and keep it away from 32. Well, right here we talked about how Kansas State is, is so strong in every phase immediately because of their defense in the kicking game. Here we go with a short field for State. And Michael Bishop left last week's game with a hip injury. He's close to 85-90%. Ryan Young, terrific senior right tackle. He'll play both sides. In fact, we'll play left tackle also. Hickson became the all-time leading ground gainer last week in a big win over Iowa State. From the plus 41, Kansas State. Hickson. Pretty good gain to the 35-yard line. Never really was tackled, just lost his footing. And it will be a sloppy mess today, even on the artificial surface here at Memorial Stadium. An odd front, though you'll see plenty of four-man fronts for the University of Kansas. Deion Rayford needs to have a good game. Steve Bratton, he's your favorite player, Dave. He's a throwback middle linebacker. He, I love to watch him play the game. He loves football. And Michael Allen's had 31 tackles the last two weeks from his strong safety spot. Second and five, Hickson again. This time, 
He gets maybe a yard. It was Michael Allen who involves himself in the running game frequently. And Kansas is out in their four-man defensive front because of injury and also to get larger at the point of attack. They feel that their personnel is more conducive and suited to having four down linemen and three linebackers. And Allen is going to be a very busy young man today, stopping the run as an extra man, the eighth man in the box, as well as spying that man, Michael Bishop, from time to time and not let him get loose. Third down and four for the Wildcats. And now Bishop's going to change the play. And now he's going to call a timeout. Well, this is something he's much more adept at doing this year as opposed to last, checking off. But now he's going to check with the sideline. We'll be back. Both teams have burned a timeout. No score. 11-21 to go in the opening quarter. Let's check the keys to victory for Kansas State. Well, they've had six out of their seven games have been at home. They've blown people away at home, but they only beat Colorado 16-9 on the road. Dominate special teams. They are amongst the country's best, if not the best. They want to prove that today. And Jeff Kelly coming off that knee problem. He wants to make a big contribution today, and he certainly did in that first defensive sequence for Kansas State. Yeah, he got a sack. Third down and four for Kansas State. Here's the option. Hickson's got some room. And with the second effort, will be very close to a first down. Michael Allen made the stop. And Kansas State, anytime they're in third and short, Dave, they like to run that option, don't they? Oh, well, they really do. Third and one, third and two, that's what they go to very regularly. And also, Michael Bishop, he will audibleize to that option. That's a that's a big, big play in their offense, no matter who they're playing. Doesn't look like they get a real favorable spot, does it? No, it looks like they're a little bit short. That's with uh, the naked eye. We shall see in a moment. Could be four down territory. Dave, with the conditions so poor today, which school does that favor? Well, I'd say probably Kansas State because they're bigger. They have a size advantage up front. Uh, but in, with Michael Bishop having a hip flexor injury, when the field is soaking wet and the temperatures are in the 40s and it's damp, it's hard to get loose. It's hard to stretch. And Michael Bishop right now struggling a little bit. I don't think he's totally loose and free and able. Well, it looks like they're going to go for it, and we're going to go downstairs to Jim Knox. Knoxie? All right, Drew, yeah, field conditions just downright miserable today. They've been squeegeeing the field all morning and all night. Here it is, just to give you an idea of the amount of water on this field. I'm talking about a couple inches of rain. Definitely a factor today. All right, Jim, you might want to bring that uh, home with you. The uh, weather continues to be poor in the state of Texas. Here's Bishop. He's got a lot of room. Wow. He can get to the end zone. He, he lost the football out of the end back. zone. Touch That'll back. be a touchback. Wow. Oh, man. He lost it right at the one-yard line. The officials are talking about it. Now, if he crossed the plane of the goal line, it's a touchdown. If that ball came free before he crossed the plane and bounded through the back line of the end zone, that is a touchback being discussed right now. Huge play early in this game. Touchback. It is a touchback. Oh, man, what a break for the Kansas Jayhawks. Michael Bishop showing that, uh, that that hip flexor is not maybe as big a problem as people thought. Nice blocking up front. Bishop takes it up the football field, north and south. Gets a downfield block. Now tuck that ball away. And the, and the hit is made right on the football. Pretty good pop on the football by Harris. And Harris puts his helmet right on the ball and knocks it free. Now, was Michael Bishop over the plane of the goal line? No, and Bill Snyder doesn't like that. Remember, they were plus 12 in the turnover department coming in. That goes as a touchback. Fumble through the end zone, touchback. Good call. There's no question. He was not in the end zone. Wegner will go out of the gun. Nowhere to throw it. The flag has come down. And now Wegner takes a big shot, helmet high. And the reason I mention that, he had a concussion last week, and he is still down. And there's two flags. I think they both saw the same thing. Kansas State jumped offside, and Wegner is down. Right now, there's a long-distance phone call, and he's not picking up at the other end. The head is ringing. Travis Litton and Jeff Kelly sandwiched him. 
And oh boy, it does not look good for Wagner. But this is going to be first and five. Kansas State jumped offside. The left defensive end jumped into the neutral zone before the snap of the football. And getting ready, Jay Alexander. And this is an interesting story. Jay Alexander took a couple of years off from football after having a great high school career in Independence and decided to walk on at Kansas. Well, and last week, he really uh, showed that he's a pretty good player, and they weren't sure. Well, he really did. He threw for over 7,500 yards and 71 touchdowns in high school, a high school legend. Last week, 11 of 18 for 115 yards. He's got huddle presence. He's got a little bit of moxie to him, and Terry Allen felt that the team really responded to Jay Alexander, although right now he does not know the offense. So Jay Alexander getting loose, and they continue to work on Zach Wegner, the junior from Platte City, Missouri. Let's watch the collision again. Zach Wegner hit by Litt and Kelly. Boy, well, you talk about Coco, but the two linebackers, I mean helmet to helmet. Wegner gets hit a little bit, but the two linebackers crush each other. And, and uh, Wegner's got a little bit of an injury to the left hand, but it was offsides. First and five for Kansas. Kansas State offside. Jay Alexander goes in the game, gives to David Whitbush. And when Wegner came off the field, Dave, he was holding his hand. Yeah, his left hand. I think he got caught up in, in that contact. And uh, I, I thought I saw some blood coming out of that, off of that hand a little bit. Uh, I, I don't know if it was just from collision on the turf or the two linebackers hit on him. Second and one after the four-yard game. So for the second straight week, Wagner, Wagner is knocked out of the game. And at least for the time being, Jay Alexander in control. Winbush again, Howard missed, and a first down, pretty nifty run by David Winbush, and we check in with Jim Knox for an injury update. Okay, Drew, it's not another concussion for Zach Wegner. What it is is his left hand. You guys are correct. Blood is really coming out of his left hand. He really took a shot from Kelly. A lot of blood. Zach Wegner is losing from his left hand right here on the bench. Drew? All right, Jim, thanks very much. Well, you just hope it's not a, a compound fracture of some sort. Yeah, hopefully just some butterfly stitch or two will take care of the problem. Let's, let's hope that's the case. Again, Winbush, and Winbush gets to about the 35-yard line. Jeff Kelly slid over. Also in the neighborhood, Jared Cooper. He is a fiery one, strong safety. Cooper is uh, very involved. He's basically a linebacker. I mean, he hits, he gets up into that box and overloads that box for Kansas State and makes a bunch of tackles. The other thing about Winbush, with his low center of gravity at five foot seven, his pad level is under yours. So he has got some surprising power because of that low center of gravity. He can really thump you when he wants to. And Kansas scrambling all around to get lined up. And they have to call a timeout. Second time here in the opening moments of the game that they have had to burn a timeout. And well, you know what's interesting about this is that yesterday when we talked to Terry Allen and Bill Salmon, the offensive coordinator, they said that they always do a good job of lining up in practice, never have a brain cramp as Zach Wegner is going uh, to the locker room. Yeah, in tears. I mean, he's in obvious pain. The problem is Alexander does not know the offense as well as Wegner. Alexander, they were trying to go empty backfield, and Alexander did not get the call correctly. But here's what Alexander did last week. A lot of it improvisational. Not really sure. In fact, coaches said that uh, a couple of times he ran naked bootlegs the wrong way and still made plays. But here's what he does. He keeps himself alive, finds somebody to throw the football to. Winbush picks up a block on the sideline. Alexander is fiery, and he's got that moxie that Coach Terry Allen was talking about, and the team seems to respond to him during practice before that football game. Alexander, on, in skeleton drill, seven on seven without a pass rush, did not have a completion. And they were scared to death about putting him in a game. Then he goes in the football game against Colorado, goes 11 for 18, and now it's off to the races, and his confidence is built. But right there, it took him too long to get the call made to go empty backfield, and they had to burn a timeout, but they're back in that formation again. Winbush, widest receiver right in front of us, Drew. We wonder how much they're scaled down with Alexander in there. 
Alexander's going to run it. He has this kind of ability, and he is tackled by Mark Simino. We talked yesterday to Terry Allen about Jay Alexander and what he accomplished last week against Colorado. Unbelievable effort by the young man. He's just still trying to learn our offense. So we didn't have him in the spring and not played football for a couple of years. But the, he's got the intangible. He went out there and he's a leader. And he's a guy that is an emotional leader. And, and the kids rallied behind that. And, uh, you know, we may see it again today. But uh, he's special. Trips to the near side for Jay Alexander on third down and four. Pressure coming. Ball underneath is low. Trying to get it to Harrison Hill, who was open on the crossing route. Instead, Kansas will have to punt it to Kansas State. And they came with another blitz. Kansas State, I'm sure they're going to heat up Alexander. Ben Lieber that time coming off the edge, hurrying the throw. You know, a lot of times quarterback pressure is not really translated in, in interceptions or sacks. It's completion percentage. And nobody has completed better than 40% in a single game against this Kansas State defensive unit. They hurry the reads and hurry the throws. David Allen, second in the nation in punt returns, 22 and a half yards. He's been in the end zone three times this year. And he'll have an opportunity here. Uh -oh. And that might have touched him. Yeah. Did it. Childs has the football. Excuse me, it's not Childs with the football. The football in Aldridge. the hands of Taiwan Aldridge. They're saying that that football did, was not touched by Kansas State. So it's Kansas State football right there. Kansas basically touching the ball dead, not able to advance it for a touchdown. It was not touched by Kansas State during the course of the return. Terry Allen thought maybe it was. He was hoping for something there. Let's take a look. Let's see, in fact, if it was. David Allen getting out of the way. It, it took a straight vertical bounce, never touching him. So right there, the ball is dead. It's not out for the races for Aldridge. He basically downed it right at that point. 28-yard line for Kansas State. Hickson in a world of trouble. And it's getting worse. He'll lose a ton back to the 18-yard line. Patrick Brown, Jeremy Haddock chase him down. Let's take a look at what Kansas has to do to win this football game. Well, Michael Bishop has got the hip flexor. They want to get hits on him. Legal, of course, but they want to hit him and wear him down a little bit. They wanted to get off to a quick start, stay in this football game. Kansas State has blown people away in the first half. Minimize the three and outs. Kansas State's defense, 42% of the time, the opposition offense goes three and out. Can't happen today for the Jayhawks. A loss of 10 on that play, Dave. Second and 20. Bishop wants to run it. And he's tackled Thank after a pickup of 15. Andrew Davison got him. You know what? I'd say the hip's okay. Yeah, they're not really, uh, they're not melting down that quarterback run package at all. And this is a design play out of the shotgun to Michael Bishop. Watch the left guard Henley pull and lead up through. Double down, right guard, right tackle. Here comes Henley on Bratton Cocoon. Bishop cuts off of that block. Nice block by Henley. Takes Bratton to the turf. And now Bishop, who's basically a running back at the quarterback position, does his thing for nice yards. Third and five. And again, Bishop changing the play. Goolsby wants to know what it is. That'd be a good idea. Bishop, late throw, complete 45-yard line to his go-to receiver, Darnell McDonald, his 40th catch of the year. And that shows and some is, maturity is exact, by Bishop. Yeah, Drew, this is exactly the evolution of Michael Bishop as a quarterback. Michael Bishop at the line of scrimmage, audibleizing, getting out of a bad play in a, into a good one, getting out of a bad protection into a good one. McDonald settles down into the seam of the zone, right in back of the linebackers, in front of the safeties. From the 45-yard line, first and 10. Bishop wanted the deep ball. It wasn't there. Now he throws it away late. Great coverage by Kansas. 
Michael Bishop, if you're playing a pickup game of football, even if you're playing tackle football, he's going to be the first guy you pick. But he's he's such a marvelous athlete, Dave. He makes something out of nothing. He really does, Drew. And the thing, the other quality that he's got is competitive nature. He's got a capital C on his chest, not necessarily for captain, although he is a leader, but for competitor. This kid refuses to lose. That is the bottom line. He absolutely is going to do whatever it takes. If a play is breaking down, he's going to make it into a, a good play. He's a very gifted guy. Look at the record as a collegiate quarterback. 17-1 and one here at Kansas State. 42-1 and one overall in his career. Only game he lost last year. 56-26 in Lincoln against the Huskers. Kansas brings for Bishop all kinds of time. Knocked down at the linebacker level. It was Tim Bowers who got up in the air and swatted away. He was in the end zone last week against Colorado on a fumble return. Well, a lot of times in zone defenses, the key is the pass drop that the linebacker gets. And Bowers got nice depth on his drop, and then he went airborne. That's pretty good uh, play right there by an outside linebacker that's pretty athletic. With that number that he's got, number 16, you wonder if he started his career as a linebacker. He's six feet, up to 220 pounds, but I venture to say he came here in the secondary initially. Third and ten. It's complete. The catch made by Aaron Lockett. First down, Wildcats 36-yard line. Andrew Davison tried to make the interception. Bishop has got such confidence in his arm strength that he'll throw the football sometimes to places that other quarterbacks wouldn't even think about. The coverage is excellent for Kansas right here. Bishop says, I've got a howitzer. I'm still going to go for the gusto, and he did. I mean, that coverage was fantastic, but he's got so such RPMs on that football. It was to Aaron Lockett before they could recover. 25.8 per reception. Talk about a quality average. And he's made McDonald better. Lockett stretching that field. Bishop on the option. That's a good tackle. Late pitch to Murphy. And I think they're going to say he was down. Or are they? No, I, I think they're, giving, they're letting the play letting the play stand. I don't think Bishop's knee was down. Murphy's a special guy. Looking at Murphy. Uh, offensive coordinator Ron Hudson said that he looks like Robert Smith, and I agree with that. Long legs, long arms, it's a long strider, the tremendous speed to the edge. But when Murphy and Bishop are in the game, that's where they're going to hurt you, on the perimeter. They want to get Bishop and Murphy on the edge of the football field doing their thing. Second down and five, Murphy remains in the game. And he gets the call. To the 20-yard line goes Frank Murphy, the long strider. And a flag has come in down about the 27-yard line. Is this a face mask or is this a hold? Let's see what we've got here. It's going to be on Kansas by Kansas State's reaction. Personal foul against the Jayhawks. That's going to be a big one, 15. Randy Crystal's mic not working. Probably a short circuit on in this weather. <laughs> I don't know how much would work uh, electronically in this weather. Really? It's soggy down there, to say the least. Nice drive by Kansas State, though. And they've done it through the air, but on the ground as well. And that's what they, that's what they wanted to do. Kansas, least penalized team in the Big 12 this season. They have not self-destructed, which is a good sign for the Jayhawk program. Bishop wants to run. Bishop, big alley. This time he holds the football. A flag comes in. Bishop in the end zone. See if we have a hold down the field here. Boy, that was a, that was a very strange. It's going to be a hold down the football field, allowing Bishop to score. I think they're going to mark it off from the point of the infraction. Like at the one-yard line, they're going to knock, knock 10 yards off. It looks like it's going to be first and, uh, first and 10 from the 11-yard line. It is holding. It's declined. It's against Kansas, not Kansas State, so it's a touchdown. They call defensive holding, not offensive holding. So Bishop's second trip to the end zone will count. 
And with 4.33 to go in the opening quarter, the fourth-ranked Wildcats are on the board. Martin Gramatica on to attempt the extra point. Bill Snyder likes to keep injury issues private. He says that's a K-State's issue and nobody else's, so he doesn't release a great deal of information about injuries. As Gramatica makes it 7 to nothing. there was all sorts of speculation that maybe Michael Bishop was hurt last week worse than many had believed. I guess not. But Michael Bishop, as you mentioned, Drew, twice he's been in the end zone. One time he, he didn't get there with the football, though. Bubble right here, Bratton. It's a quarterback draw, design play. Bishop knows he's going to run over the right guard because there was a linebacker there and no down lineman. Bishop goes airborne and takes it into the end zone. Here's the bubble right here. No down lineman. Look at that cavity. And Bishop knows on a pre-snap read, he's got no defensive lineman lined up over his guard. He's got a linebacker, Bratton, over his guard, and Bratton gets blocked down the football field. Cummins does a good job of sustaining contact enough where Bishop up and over. Boy, that's an athletic play right there. He'd be a pretty good long jumper, I think, as well as everything else. Well, Dave, long jumper, anything. Three carries, 56 yards for the guy with the strained hip. Absolutely. And, and what you do in the running game a lot of times, you run to the bubble. By the bubble, I mean where the linebacker ends up lining up in the four-down lineman scheme. The left tackle, left guard, center, and right tackle were covered by down linemen. The right guard had the bubble. Linebacker Bratt, and that's exactly where Michael Bishop took the football in the quarterback draw. Nice recognition. <laughs> Keep in mind, the drive began with a loss of 10 yards, so they were facing second and 20. Absolutely. It's like a, you know, off schedule to the max. This is in the direction of Mitch Bowles from the five. And Bowles gets out to the 28-yard line. Let's take a look at the scoring drive brought to you by Buick. 72 yards, nine plays, and Michael Bishop from 10 yards away scores the touchdown, his eighth rushing touchdown of the year. Way to go, 72 yards in just a little over three and a half minutes. That's pretty uh, pretty good productivity right there. That's getting some nice chunks of yards for yourself. Jay Alexander remains the quarterback. If you're just joining us, Zach Wagner hurt his hand on the second series. Bowles loses a bunch. In there quickly, Kelly and number 40, Jared Cooper. Boy, if Jared Cooper is going to be that involved at the line of scrimmage, involved in the tackle for loss, you've got to start to think about play action pass and go over the top. Look at the linebackers coming downhill and the safeties attacking the football. Kelly and Cooper. Sounds like a couple of tires combined efforts right there. And they, they absolutely detonated the play for a flat tire. Nowhere to go for Bowles. They wanted to try to run away from number 40. Didn't happen there. Here's a waggle, Alexander in a lot of trouble, and down he goes. Darren Howard got him, his fourth sack of the year. And the Jayhawks are going the wrong direction. They really are, they're just attacking the line of scrimmage, are the Kansas State Wildcats. They're reestablishing the line of scrimmage backwards. Everything is downhill, hitting gaps, penetration is extreme. Nowhere for the quarterback to go. Contain happens. Howard finishes it off. 11 sacks last year. That's his fourth of this season. Third down and a good-sized ranch. Bowles on the delay. And he'll get it near the original line of scrimmage. Another flag down at the 10-yard line. Didn't look like anybody jumped. Did Kansas State line up offside, or did Kansas not have seven men on the line of scrimmage? Let's see what went on here, because I didn't see any early movement necessarily. Got holding on the edge. Well, the least penalized team in the Big 12 has been penalized frequently here in the opening quarter, much to the chagrin of Terry Allen. Now, what will Kansas State do? Will they decline this and take the football because it's uh, it's time to give the football up? Or will they take the penalty and try to play more field position problems for the Jayhawks? Looks like they're going to take the penalty and bury him backwards. And, you know, Dave, 
one of the reasons Bill Snyder may have decided to do that is not only the presence of David Allen, a great punt return unit, but Kansas will be punting into the wind. No doubt about that. And, and also, if, if they get another play, tackle for loss here, or another problem play, they'll be punting out of their own end zone, and the, and the percentages to block the punt become that much more dramatic. You can really heat them up. Third and 28. Ooh, got him there. Damian Hunt and Andre Rowe butted heads. We'll see who moved. Looked like Kansas State got caught in the voice inflection by the quarterback. Did somebody flinch up front for KU? I don't think so. I think State just listened to the quarterback. Kansas State. And that's, that's the call. Once again, a non-rhythmic cadence by Jay Alexander. Gave the hard count on the second hut of a three-hut cadence. And he got them all jumping. He had them all on a string right there. Very simple. Peripheral vision. Don't listen to the quarterback. Watch the football. When the ball moves, you move. That simple. Balls to the 21-yard line. Die shot Carter made the tackle, and now Kansas will punt the football. 2.46 to go in the first quarter. Kansas State 7, Kansas nothing. With Dave Lapham and Jim Knox, I'm Drew Goodman. And once again, punting into the wind you described, Drew. You get into the upper atmosphere. It's whipping pretty good. And Kansas State should be afforded excellent field position once again. Negotiating a short field potentially will be the offensive team. Tyler will hit it inside his own 15. David Allen on the run. He takes a lick at the 34-yard line, but great field position again for Kansas State after a punt of 26 and a return of 13. We check in with Jim Knox. Jim? All right, thanks, Drew. Zach Wigner, the Kansas quarterback, will not return to the game. This is the reason why he took a shot a couple of series ago, running with the football, trying to make things happen. He gets sandwiched right here. Kelly really converges on him now it looked that first indication he hit his head not so what happened is his left index finger deep gash in his left index finger and right now they are stitching that up in the locker room through and keep in mind thank you jim that he throws lefty bishop again checking off Three-step drop, quick delivery, Darnell McDonald, take what you give him, and uh, there's a pretty good cushion there on the short side of the field for McDonald. McDonald, the possession receiver. There's no doubt he works the underneath routes. Lockett will stretch the field. McDonald will work underneath until Lockett became available and uh, understood the offense well enough to be a factor. They were doubling McDonald, no more. They can't do it because Lockett will hurt them down the football field. Now Lockett had just one catch the first couple of weeks of the season. Since that time, he's really emerged. Goolsby has the football. And Goolsby has another 10. And he fired up. He gets it about once a weekend. Let the big dog eat. Appropriately named on Halloween, the cool ghoul, Brian Goolsby. He uh, much, much more than his average right th there on that particular lug. Nothing fancy, just a quick fullback dive. Pearson the line of scrimmage in a hurry. Nice surge uh, by the left side of the offensive line. Henley got it started. Now you're blocker again, big fella. That's it. You had your, you had your bone. Well, well, again. well maybe not. <laughs> He'll have the first down. He got a couple to the 11-yard line. Dave, you love watching the fullbacks and obviously offensive line play where you toiled in the NFL. This guy is about as good as you'll see in terms of lead blockers, isn't he? Hey, he gets after it. I mean, he will. He definitely does not shy away from contact. He loves the collision, and he lives vicariously like linemen do when his back hits him, uh, rushed for a career school record total. You know, he took uh, great. He lived vicariously through that. Hickson off the lead block by Goolsby, but the Blue Shirts do a good job. Steve Bratton around the football. 
Also, John Williams, the nose tackle, who hates being a nose tackle. He says, I wish I was a linebacker. The only problem, John, is you're 300 pounds, and this side of Lamont Kirkland, you don't see too many 300-pounders in two-point stands. Let's take a look at what Kansas State has done in the red zone. 89% of the time they convert in terms of field goal or touchdown, but their touchdown ratio pretty impressive as well. This year, 28 touchdowns and 38 red zone journeys. That's pretty nice. And I'll get the clock right. A little bit more time on the clock. That or... Uh... Isn't that the universal sign to raise the roof and get crowd noise from <laughs> uh, Randy Crystal? <laughs> Don't usually see the referee asking for more crowd noise. Hicks hit, not much. Good job again by John Williams defeating the block and moving down the line of scrimmage. Tim Bowers also involved, number 16. And it'll be third and eight. Kansas State can get a first down inside the one yard line without scoring. This is a big down for Kansas right here. Third and this should favor the defensive football team. Third and long, anything more than third and five, the percentages swing toward the defense. This being third and seven, but when you have a quarterback like Michael Bishop, you can put him in the gun, they decide not to do it this time, and he can still run a quarterback draw, the option, he's talented. That's what he wants to run, the QB draw. And it doesn't go anywhere. So Kansas does a good job down near their goal line. And we'll see Gramatica, Deion Johnson, 63, Steve Bratton combined to bring down Bishop. The field goal will come at the other end of the field. The first quarter history, Kansas State leading Kansas in Lawrence, 7-0. Sunflower Showdown. Sunflower State Showdown. Kansas State dominated the first quarter. They lead 7 to nothing, and they're about to line up to try to extend that lead to 10 to nothing. And the numbers 127 to 5. That tells you all you need to know so far. Look at this. Look at the field position advantage that Kansas State has enjoyed. That turnover was costly. It, it cost Kansas State seven points. That was the Michael Bishop fumble before he crossed the goal line that dribbled through the back line of the end zone for a touchback. We saw Gramatica hit his 65-yard earlier this year, and this one is good, but it won't count. Little, Evidently, there was movement before the snap. Little early movement by Kansas State on the edge, it looked like. The problem, obviously, distance is not a problem for Martin Gramatica in a day like today. The problem is the plant foot with the slick turf. You have to have the, there's three phases to a successful field goal. Good snap, good hold, and good kick. And in the, the wetter the condition, the tougher it is to execute all three phases successfully. And when Gramatica approaches the football to get a firm plant and follow through, it gets a little more dicey as this field gets soggier and soggier. It's a 35-yard attempt, so they could probably withstand another seven <laughs> false starts. Right. Good snap, good hold. Gramatica knocks it through. They hit it into the wind, no matter. Ten to nothing. Kansas State. Just... You know, do a little scuba diving out there or something. Or maybe the penguin. Yeah, really. <laughs> 10 to nothing, Kansas State. Your goodman, Dave Lapham, Jim Knox from the drenched Lawrence. And this is a high spinner. Fair catch is called and made by Henri Childs at the 26-yard line. That was 1991. 
year Kansas won. As David Winbush gets to the line of scrimmage, and that is all. Just five yards of total offense for the University of Kansas thus far. Well, the Kansas State defensive football team allowing like 72 yards per game on the ground, second best in the country, 2.1 per rush. That is unbelievable, allowing only 2.1 per rush on the season. Mark Simino over 100 tackles each of his first two years at Kansas State. They're so balanced defensively, he might not get to 100 tackles this year. And now a flag has been thrown by the referee. I think he'll pick it up. Kansas State, or Kansas coaches came onto the field, and I think he was, that was the penalty flag. No flag on the play. Timeout was called. Right, and the timeout had been called. When he saw people coming off the sideline, he flagged Kansas, but they had already called the timeout, so Terry Allen's safe where he is. Kansas when he was at Northern Iowa his first victory as a head coach came against Bill Snyder's Kansas State Wildcats that was back in 1989 second and 12 they tried to swing at the flat to David Winbush but Jay Alexander let him too much It'll be third and 12, and we take a look at our Dr. Pepper Big 12 leaders. That's what I was talking about. That's phenomenal. 72 yards a game, only allowing 2.1 per rush. 2.1 yards per carry. And on first down, Kansas has run the ball five times on first down. That has been their play selection. They have not thrown the ball yet on first down. Five rushes for a mere three yards. 0 0.6 per rush. On the flip side of it, Kansas State, eight plays for 51 yards, running and throwing the football, averaging six and a half yards per play. Difference in the game. Beneath the 36-yard line, Alexander's throw wide of Byron Gassaway. And there was good coverage on the play, and again, Kansas will have to punt. So not only are they not moving the football, Dave, they're going three and out, and that allows Kansas State to have the football and uh, Kansas' defense to have to play that many more snaps. And uh, Gassaway fell down in his route. The field is getting so slick that even the receiver who has the advantage, he knows when he's going to cut and where he's going to go. Gassaway slipped and fell on that particular route. Tyler with the win. Allen from the 43. Good coverage downfield. Excellent job downfield. That was Aldridge. Punt of 33, a net punt of 33. Well, this year there's a new ranking to tell you about the Bowl Championship Series. One versus two will happen January 4th in the Fiesta Bowl. And the first time this ranking has come out, Dave, UCLA won, Ohio State two. Kansas State is fourth. Kansas State is fourth, mostly because of difficulty of schedule. UCLA has got the toughest schedule in the country. Ohio State's number 16, Tennessee number two. Kansas State falls far short of that, and as a result of strength of schedule being factored in so heavily in the BCS uh, series, they find themselves out of the running right now in the top two. Yeah, 49th toughest schedule in the country at this point. And a pretty good gain on first down for Eric Hickson. And here's what we're talking about. UCLA, number one. Tennessee, number two, toughest schedule. There's the difference. Kansas State, the only team in the top five BCS series that's not in the top 20 difficulty of schedule. The fact that they've blown people away to the extent that they have has them in the top four. But if their schedule were a little tougher, they'd be uh, in the hunt. Second and five, Michael Bishop. McDonald now going long, readjusts, and almost made a circus catch. You know, I guess if you're a wideout, you're playing with Michael Bishop, your route's never done. And if you're a defensive back, you never drop coverage. Never, ever drop coverage on Michael Bishop. Now, let's take a look at this. It's 40, high 40s temperature. Here's a quarterback with a hip flexor problem that rolls to his left, throws back across his body in the pouring rain, cold temperatures, 40 yards in the air, right on the money to McDonald. 
He has got a howitzer hanging off of that right shoulder. That, that was effortless for him to do that in, in these miserable weather conditions. You can't plant, you can't throw, he can throw. Third and five for Mr. Bishop and the Wildcats. 13-22 to go in the second quarter, 10 to nothing, Kansas State. Quarterback draw, Bishop slashing away, running over an official and getting close to a first down. I guess if you're the umpire, you better get out of the way also. You're always in the middle of the battle. The umpire, Bob Holliday, took the spill. He really did. He got the unassisted tackle. I mean, I think the reason that Michael Bishop came up short is because of Holliday. He just, he absolutely, he didn't know which way to go to get out of the way, so he basically screened Bishop out of the play. And Michael Bishop's trying to run around him. He reads the crease pretty well, and then the umpire moves the wrong way. That's a nice pick. Bishop runs him over, but the umpire involved, and I guess at least he gets an assist. There's no doubt that he's involved in that tackle. Yeah, I think he got the solo, Dave. Man. Had a game last week. Cincinnati Bengals game out in Oakland. The umpire in that particular game got run over by Napoleon Kaufman, broke his right hip, and suffered a concussion. It hit in the head with Kaufman's helmet, hit the ground, and broke his hip. It was ugly. Do you know what? In all seriousness, of the, of the striped shirts, the position where you better have your head on a swivel is umpire because you're in the thick of it. It really, and also throwing the ball short over the middle, umpires get hit right in the noggin. They take the noodle shot regularly if they don't have their eyes open. Fourth and about half a foot. Bishop should have it. That's a smart job by Cummins. Cummins saw Kansas lurching into the neutral zone and snapped the ball. And as a result of that, Bishop just cozied up behind him very, very easily for the first down. Take a look at what I'm talking about here. As Cummins as he sees Kansas start to move forward at the line of scrimmage, neutral zone problem, he snaps it. Easy block, easy quarterback sneak as a result of catching Kansas offside. Seventh first down for the Wildcats, just one for the Jayhawks. Bishop, complete. He got it to Aaron Lockett. And the little man hauled it in, the younger brother of Kansas City Chief, Kevin Lockett. And Jamie Harris just couldn't find the football. Jamie Harris was in the vicinity, but he was playing Lockett totally and never got his head turned to find the football. Bishop saw that Harris had his head totally turned and fired that thing in there. Well, when Bishop transfers his weight and throws the football, he's extremely accurate. But Harris had his back to the ball, never found the ball. The ball basically it almost hit Harris in the back without him realizing it. Hickson, good play defensively. Brian Goolsby trying to make the block, but submarining the block and getting the tackle with 16 Tim Bowers. Around the country we go. The Ramblin' Wreck tied up with the Terrapins. Penn State putting a hurt on uh, the once fighting Illini. Tennessee leading the Gamecocks and your alma mater, two better than Pitt. That used to be a great rivalry, Dave. That is. That's a good battle. And the Battle of Virginia going on right there. Tech and West Virginia, 17-13 in favor of the Texters. How did they lose to Temple? Well, that was maybe the biggest upset of the, at least this decade, I think. That was an enormous upset. Ooh. That was one where you wonder if the score was right when you first see it. Second and 12. Bishop trying to screen. And this is well defense. Good job by Kansas. Hicks and lose the bunch. There's our man Bowers again. Well, the reason the screen was thrown for that big a loss, Dwyer threw it out of timing because of his pressure on Bishop. Bishop wanted to throw the football sooner than he did. But the penetration is too severe by Dwyer, and he makes Bishop retreat and mistime the screen. As a result of that timing problem, Bowers is able to blow it up. The relationship between the lineman and screen back wasn't good because the initial penetration by Big Dwyer inside. Bowers, an excellent student, pre-med. He's a sophomore from Columbus, Ohio. Third and 15 for the Wildcats. Bishop throwing in a double coverage toward Lockett. Now it's great coverage by Davidson. Andrew Davison was there, and Gramatica, I'm sure, will come on the field on fourth down. Well, one thing that Michael Bishop will continue to do is, is because of the immense confidence he has in his throwing arm, 
force the football, and that is flat double coverage. There's no way, absolutely no way. He tried to throw a low and outside, but there's no way that his receiver could make a play on that football. There was another better option to go to, but Michael Bishop, instead of checking his reads short to deep, his are reversed. He reads deep to short. 45 yards into the wind from the near hash mark. Certainly he has the leg to get it there, and he does. Wow. And he celebrates like nobody else after a successful field goal. He was the best kicker in the land last year. He may be again this year. Elevation he got even on the 65 yarder. He hits those long field goals with a nine iron shot. Most people have to get out the one iron. He's still lofting that bad boy. This one he kicks short again. And Childs will get to the 30-yard line with the football. We have another update, by the way, on Zach Wegner. We know he's done for the day, and evidently he did get another concussion, Dave. Yeah, he took a shot in the head, although the linebackers, uh, the, the main brunt of the collision was, was between the two of them. Wagner was caught in the middle initially, and the fact that he sustained a second-degree concussion last week didn't need much of a hit to sustain another one this week, so head's a little bit delicate right now. I wonder if he'll be ready to go final two weeks of the season. All kinds of movement. Ball's loose. Boy. And uh, a lot of ugliness. Well, you had Kansas State in the neutral zone, then you had Damian Hunt jumping early at the at offensive line, but neutral zone violation, was that prior to, or is it offset by the by the jumping early? Let's see what the call is. Dead ball, false start on the offense. They get Hunt. Terry Allen's team was fired up this week. He said, we're tired of being second bananas in this state. Kansas State now gets all of the attention in the autumn. That changes a little bit when Roy Williams starts practicing basketball with uh, no doubt. the Jayhawks. But I think Kansas State was ready to play today as well. Yeah, they came out fired up. I mean, they knew they had to match the emotion and intensity that Kansas was going to start this football game with, and they did. And there's a completion of Michael Chandler, 20th consecutive game that Chandler has caught a pass in. Short of a first down by a bunch, Dyshot Carter had the coverage. It'll be second and nine. Now, even though you're two scores down, you don't want to abandon the running game if you're Kansas. They ran the ball decently against Kansas State last year. You don't want to get one-dimensional because then you're playing right into Kansas State's hands. Alexander changes the play. And this time he goes to Harrison Hill, who holds on and gets the first down Face in mask. front of Carter. Face mask. That's going to be a big one, maybe. Carter, as he tried to make the tackle, he got all tangled up in Harrison Hill's face mask. Well, Carter lost his starting job a couple of weeks ago. But Gerald Neesman's not playing today, so Jeremetrius Butler goes on one side, Carter on the other. Personal foul, face mask, all of the First down. That's going to put it in Kansas State territory. Exactly, and he, he really made more than one mistake here. Hill runs him off the ball, a little comeback route. Carter doesn't make the play, then he doesn't finalize the tackle, and, and he gets the left hand up in the face mask, tries to yank him down that way. So coverage wasn't good enough, doesn't execute a tackle, and then commits a personal foul when finalizing the tackle. That's a bad play. I'd have to give that one a minus, I guess, if you're a coach great in that play. A couple of minuses, a double minus. Hill comes to the near side. First time Kansas has been in Kansas State territory. From the plus 44. Winbush, nothing doing. Boy, is Jeff Kelly active. The 245-pound senior middle backer from LaGrange, Texas. Well, one thing that Kansas wants to do in order to run the football is bring a wide receiver in motion to block the outside linebacker. Let's take a look at Chandler, number 86, as he comes in motion across the, here he comes in motion. Watch him choke it down and then try to block the outside linebacker. 
And that, that way they get an offensive lineman to go up inside on Cooper at safety. That's one of the schemes today. Alexander Hill intercepted downfield. It's Carter to the 20-yard line. So he makes up for the face mask with a pick. And then we get two flags. I don't know if they have holding downfield or maybe roughing the quarterback up the field. I don't know what we've got, but let's see. Or we got holding. They got two Man. different things going on. You Absolutely. Got... One down the field and one at the line of scrimmage. There's three flags on both sidelines and in the middle of the field at the hash mark. Three different flags being talked about. Carter actually came off his receiver to make the play. Right, the ball was overthrown and Carter made the play. Well, there's, there's multiple fouls going on here. I don't know if we've got an offset. One, one possibility is Kansas State, they really put a lot of pressure on their linebackers in coverage. And Simino is working against Harrison Hill on that particular play. They may, they may get Simino for a little bit of a defensive hold. You can't chuck or grab five yards past the line of scrimmage. And they get him for some defensive holding there. Let's see how this is going to shake down. Boy, you got a zebra convention going on now. Multiple fouls occurring on this bad boy. One thing we can tell you is it looks like the rain has stopped. Sort of. For now. We have multiple fouls on the play. Yeah, we knew that. <laughs> we have pass interference on the defense. We have an illegal block on the defense. We have a dead ball personal foul on the defense. Wow. Boy, a triple header against the defense. You, no. you just give him a touchdown? What's the well, deal? Walk off 45 yards? No, interference, Kansas State should get the football. Interference, uh, I don't know. Let, let's well, it's see. interference against Kansas State, so Kansas I mean, holds on to the ball. I mean, Kansas should get the football is what I'm saying, right. Interference against Kansas State, Kansas holds on to the football. And that's the bottom line. That was the biggest of the fouls. They must have called Simino. Working against Harrison Hill down the football field. That's where the interference took place. And that's the reason the ball was overthrown is because Simino rerouted Hill by grabbing him. And he didn't really get the distance on his route that Jay Alexander was, was contemplating. So that's the, that's the major penalty. They're going to mark the yardage off on the pass interference against Kansas State, which will give Kansas retention of the football. Yeah, unfortunately for Kansas fans, uh, they don't get to... Uh mark off all of those you don't get the accumulation of yards no you just get the football and, and be happy with that but boy a three bagger against one one football team i haven't seen that in a while i don't think i've seen that in a while myself oh they are marking it all well the dead ball they, they'll get 30 yards out of it because the other one was after, after the, play. the play was over. Exactly, the whistle had blown. 45 yards in penalties on this drive for Kansas. And you know what? That's what Bill Snyder's wondering on the sideline. Why the double foul? He didn't realize that the other play was a dead ball foul. He thought that it all happened during the course of action, not after the whistle. It will be explained to him. He thinks it's offsetting. That's where his confusion is. All three, he doesn't realize all three penalties were against his football team. If they can punch it in the end zone, we have a football game again. 9.20 to go in the second quarter, 13 to nothing, Kansas State. He thought one of these fouls was against Kansas, not all three going against his football team. He gave the indication of offsetting penalties. I think he thought the illegal block below the waist was against Kansas, not against his football team. We have a moment. Big 12 fans, how'd you like to win a trip to the Big 12 championship game? It's easy. Just answer the Nations Bank salute to excellence question. The question this week who holds a single season record for most receptions at Kansas State? Some good receivers there. Michael Smith, Kevin Lockett, Darnell McDonald, and Greg Washington. And if you know the answer, visit the Nations Bank website at nationsbank.com slash sports. All correct entries will be entered into a drawing for a trip to see. The Big 12 championship game, participants must be 
18 or older. See, if you were going to wear a costume in the game today, Dave, yes, those plants are wiped out. You just got to put those big yellow uh, rain gear, rain gear, no things doubt. on, right? Yeah, you got to you just wear the big old rain gear, raincoat. Not many umbrellas. I guess they don't allow umbrellas in many stadiums anymore. There's a few umbrellas out there, but lots of rain gear. I'll tell you that. After the march off, first and ten at the 15-yard line for Kansas. Here's the draw, Winbush. There's just nowhere to run. Kelly hit him initially, and then Joe Bob Clemens finished him off. Jim Knox, what do you have? Drew, Zach Wittner continues to be in the locker room, and here's the latest. He took 25 stitches on his left index finger. This is the play that he got injured on in the first quarter. He also suffered a second concussion of the year, and his father, Steve, tells me he is through for the season. Through for the season because of the concussion problem. That's a shame. He had never had a concussion before. Here's an end zone shot to Castaway. That is intercepted. Lamar Chapman. That's interference on. That's once once again. That's that's interference on Carter. That's the third penalty I think on this. Or no, he had the interception that was nullified. Second interference penalty on Carter. He absolutely obliterated Gasway's effort to get to the football. You can't do that down the field. The reason it was thrown as an interception is Carter just took Gasway right out of the play. If that's the case, four major penalties on Kansas State in this one drive. And it's wiped out two turnovers. Amazing. Take a look at the right of the screen as we look at the uh, the fade that's being run. Alexander goes airborne with it. And right there, Carter is absolutely just taking Gasway down to the turf, pushing him around. That's the reason for the interception, a flagrant pass interference. That's two of those on Carter. They had, Carter had a face mask penalty, or excuse me, had the face mask penalty and the pass interference. And then, of course, the dead ball foul. Three majors on Kansas State. They're self-destructing on this drive defensively by penalty. First and goal at the eight. Winbush. There's just nowhere to run. Damian McIntosh, Andre Rowe, the two deep tackles on the line of scrimmage right now for the Wildcats. There's McIntosh. He goes 290 from Hollywood, Florida, and Rowe goes 290 also from the state of Florida. In red zone defense pretty good. Almost just over 50% of the time has the opposition put a touchdown on the board. And that's what the defensive responsibility is right now. Bow your back because you're self-destructive with penalty and limit it to nothing more than a field goal opportunity. On the fade, Chandler, touchdown, he caught it. So Kansas right back in it. Well, they got Butler turned around. completely turned around you know as a defensive back you don't want to do a 360 and Chandler had him spinning like a Tasmanian devil out there in the corner Chandler's a little bit happy about that touchdown reception well they say he's a little scary on game day <laughs> he's, he's one of those guys that really gets juiced up he's an aggressive blocker in the running game and he's rewarded with a touchdown on the fade to the corner of the end zone the fade's been good to Kansas against Kansas State Garcia He's going to get tackled, and the extra point is botched. The snap was not held. It went right through Harrison Hill's hands. The ball is slippery and wet, and it just split his hands, and he's a wide up. Take a look at Chandler's touchdown. Once again, the fade. Last year, Kansas State was penalized four times for pass interference trying to defend the fade. They figured working on the fade against McDonald was going to take care of things. You have to maintain position on the fade, on the fade route, and it didn't happen. Right there, you see Black, the Butler just getting turned completely around, and Alexander sees that Butler spinning, and Chandler comes up with the football. On the extra point, you have a wide receiver, Harrison Hill, good hands, right through those hands. The ball's a little bit too heavy and wet, can't squeeze it, extra point aborted. First touchdown catch of the year for Chandler, first touchdown pass of the career 
of Jay Alexander. 7.55 to go in the first half. Kansas within a touchdown. Joe Garcia will kick it deep. Ooh. Oh, they pooch it. This is Gould's D. And he's tackled at the 34-yard line. That was by design. Yep, that was a mini pooch. <laughs> they pooched it last week against Colorado, came up with the football. Absolutely. And that helped them knock off the University of Colorado, and they said they might do that a couple of times today. Let's take a look at the Buick scoring drive, a drive of 70 yards, and credit close to 50 of those yards to Kansas State. No doubt. Huge penalties, 38 yards right there on three Kansas State penalties of the major variety. Dead ball foul, 15-yard face mask, pass interference. Painful. It was a painful drive defensively. I think there's there two interference. Yeah, there were two interference penalties. There was uh, nullifying two giveaways, two takeaways. There was 50 yards in penalties there. And a short game. John Williams wrestles Goolsby to the ground. John Williams got himself quite a day already on the nose. The junior from Oklahoma City. He's thick. You know, he's, he's got that uh, shot put with legs body. He's going to get under your pads. He's a manhole cover with legs, and he's angry every week because he wants to be a linebacker. <laughs> Well, he's on the right side of the football. He's got that defensive mentality. And Kansas is, is much improved since they've gone to the four-down lineman configuration. Much more stout against the run. Second and three, or second and seven for Michael Bishop and Kansas State. And McDonald will have a first down. That's just taking what they'll give you in the secondary. Huge cushion, and McDonald just turned around, and Bishop flipped him the football. Right, and the cushion was enormous. It's like a long lateral. It's like a safe play in your running game. Get the football out there and let McDonald do something with it after the play. It was about a step and a half drop by Bishop, but you see the cushion is enormous, and then not, not a real strong force uh, to support the running game by Harris. He was a little bit tentative coming up to make a stick on McDonald as well. Bishop. Long oh, wow. shot to McDonald, and he dropped it. 23-yard line, he was all alone, and he couldn't squeeze it. And he can't believe it. He's still in shock that he didn't catch that football. Michael Bishop put a, put a pretty good ball there. McDonald felt he had to slide to the turf to try to make a play on it. Little play-action fake to freeze the linebackers. You see the linebackers stepping up and then trying to drop back in their in their route, in their zones, and the ball is thrown over the linebackers and safeties as McDonald finds a little bit of a crease in there. But he can't finalize and catch the football, but the play-action really, really caused that opening for McDonald in the route. How heavy is the football? It starts to get uh, like a shot put. I mean, it starts to get heavy. Picks up a couple ounces when it's in the air a while. Deep ball. Oh, man. Lockett's all alone. To the eight-yard line. Brain cramp right there in the secondary. Broken coverage big time. And there's a flag down way back at the 43-yard line. I think it's a flag. Looks yellow. It looks like it's going to be against Kansas. Michael Bishop's initial reaction is it's going against the Jayhawks. It may be a personal foul late. It is. It's going against Kansas. So that'll give him half the distance to the goal from that point. It'll be first and goal at about the four-yard line. I know 22 is hard to see. He's only five foot seven, but you might want to cover him. Dead ball, personal foul on the defense. Half the distance to the goal. First. He's averaging almost 26 yards of reception. Well, let's take a look at what happens. Lockett just runs down the middle of the football field. Davison tries to make a recovery. He realizes that there's a mix-up in the route. And as he tries to recover and get back to the middle to help, he slips to the turf, but they just let Lockett go. Somebody just dropped coverage on him in the middle of the field. Tremendous error right there. Two people jumped on one receiver and let the other one run clean. First and goal at the five. Murphy in the game. He gets the call. Not much doing. Submarining. The play was 92, Nate Dwyer. 
take a look, lock it, of course, with a, with a big play on that particular pass reception. Let's take a look at what Kansas State is doing. Look at some of these gaudy averages. Michael Bishop averaging 19.4 yards per completion, and it translates to a lot of these big yards per catch out of his wideouts. Michael Bishop led the NCAA at 19 and a half yards last year, and he's right on track again this year. Option Bishop will be short of the end zone by a yard to pick up on that thought, Dave. Michael Bishop averages more than 10 yards in attempt. How good is that? Well, last year, Steve Young led the NFL at eight and a half yards per attempt. Exactly. In the NFL, if you average better than seven yards per attempt, you're getting it done. This guy's in double digits. Not per completion, per attempt. Here's per completion. Last year, led the NCAA, and he's not far behind this year. Third and goal. Bishop again. Oh, he takes a shot. He didn't get in. It'll be fourth down. Uh-oh. Bishop didn't like the little extra curricula going on by Bowers. Gave him a little swat, but no flag. J.J. Johnson, who was iffy whether he was going to play, 45, put his helmet right on Bishop. Well, he's got turf toe, but here you don't have to do much running. You got a short yardage goal line situation, and he absolutely stoned him. Then Bowers pulling him back, and Bishop saying, get away, talk to the hand. Fourth and goal inside the one. Murphy in the air, touchdown. No doubt, Bill Snyder, absolutely no doubt, didn't want to think about it at all. We're just going for it. Run the shadow of the goal line. If we can't get this half yard, we don't deserve this football game. Try to recapture the momentum that Kansas generated by his defense penalizing themselves a lot on the prior drive. But Kansas right back in the game. They want to answer momentum with a big drive of their own. And they did that. Murphy up and over. He's not a bad guy to go to on the goal line. He's got 42-inch hops. Shoot. Dramatica, line drive, extra point. Right through there. And Kansas State extends their lead to 14. 20 to 6 with 432 to go in the first half. Let's take a look once again at the touchdown by Murphy. It starts up front. You have to at least neutralize the line of scrimmage on the goal line so the linebackers can't come over the top and stone your running back. And Allen tried to get it done, but there wasn't enough of a surge. Nice surge, actually, by Kansas State's offensive line, getting it pushed in the middle where Allen just can't get a hit on Murphy on the other side of the line of scrimmage. You know, Kansas State has had the football five times today, Dave. First time they fumbled through the end zone going in, and they uh, lost it on a touchback. The other four times, touchdown, field goal, field goal, touchdown. Well, they're picking up where they left off against Iowa State. Eight of ten possessions they scored last week. They had a school record 37 first downs, and they had the ball for over 40 minutes. Played keep away against Iowa State. So this offense, averaging over 52 yards a game, is a buzzsaw. I mean, it's, it's very tough. There's no question about it. They've outscored people by 188 points in the first half. They've only given up 27 points, and they've scored well over 200. It's amazing. Yeah, if their games were uh, boxing matches, there'd be a lot of TKOs early. And, and then the thing is, in the third quarter, their defense has not allowed a point all year. They have not been scored on in the third quarter, Kansas State. Childs for the 10. And Childs out to the 33-yard line. Pretty good burst by the kid whose daddy was a star tight end in Manhattan. Let's check in with Jim Knox. Okay, Drew, coming up at halftime, Dave's coaching tips takes us into the film room. We'll also take a look back at some big plays in the Big 12 and look ahead to other Big 12 action later this afternoon. That's you coming your way at halftime, Drew. All right, Jim, who gave him that umbrella? I thought he said he was going to go without it today. <laughs> Timeout's been called by Lamar Chapman and the Kansas State defense. You know, the thing is, te both teams having to burn so many timeouts. Timeout. At the end of the half, when you want to be in a two-minute drill, you're going you're gonna to be deprived. Deprived of stopping the clock, uh, having to burn the timeouts. Kansas had to burn a timeout the first play of the game when they had 
multiple receivers and multiple tight ends in the game. They had 12 men on the field. They tried a Canadian formation and had to get out of it. Well, it's 20 to 6 with 4.22 to go. If you're Terry Allen, you love to somehow put another drive together and get a few points and be in the game. I think his goal was to try to be in the thing in the second half, Dave, and, and somehow come up with a big play and pull the upset. Well, that's what, that, was, what is, that was what his goal was when we had them earlier against Texas A&M, and they did find themselves in a position in the fourth quarter of that football game. A&M had to go on a long drive to win it by a field goal at the end of that football game. And, of course, he uh, executed that game plan with great success against Colorado, winning that game by a couple of scores. So that is the... That is the plan to be in the hunt in the fourth quarter, see if something can happen. Trips to the near side, five wide outs, empty backfield. Blitz coming, Alexander gets it away, Childs had it, and couldn't pull it in. Henri Childs, who just returned that kick, he was going to be one of the guys that Kansas involved quite a bit today. He has terrific hands, best on the team. Oh, he has, he has great hands. Not not the biggest in the world, of course, at about 200, 205 pounds. But uh, that that's uncharacteristic. Henry Childs normally eats that ball up. Winbush. And he spins for a first down. He's a whole lot of fun to watch. He's he five foot seven. They call him the Colleen Comet. Of course, there was a Comet back here who played in the 60s who was a pretty fair running back. Gail Sayers, one of the greatest ever. And Winbush, if you have any trouble with him running the football, put him in the slot and throw him the football. They're utilizing him as a receiver now. Empty backfield, he's the widest receiver in the formation. Alexander, knocked down. Dropped at the 39-yard line. They feel they've got three quality rush ends. Monty Beisel is as good as the other two. Monty Beisel in the goal line will play a little fullback for you, too. In fact, that may be his position if he is afforded the opportunity to play at the next level. Maybe a Rathman type fullback down the road. Who knows? Yeah, he's a guy that Kansas State. Eight, ten years ago, wouldn't have been able to sign. He was a parade All-American coming out of Douglas, Kansas. And guys like that just didn't go to Manhattan. Now they do. Second and 16. Childs flanks out to the left. Here's Winbush. And if Chapman doesn't make that tackle, Winbush may be gone. Best gain of the day for David Winbush. And Norris is the guy that got it started. Norris is fullback, does a nice job. Watch Norris seal the perimeter right here. That's an excellent effort by Norris as he seals the edge and gets Winbush off and running to the perimeter. You know, if you give Winbush a little bit of room, he's got some wiggle, he'll make you miss. Third and one, he got 15. Alexander keeps it. That was the only running option. They were empty in the backfield. Lock stops with 3.02 to go in the first half. Timeouts have come in handy right now. Devoid of timeouts, though, due to problems early in the football game personnel-wise. Trying to cut it back. And he ran into Damian McIntosh. And normally when you run into 77, you're done. Let's take a look at what David Winbush did last week against Colorado. Once he found seams where he picked up his downfield blockers, he was unbelievably effective. But it all started up front. You see the holes that David Winbush is getting started. He's not making his first cut until he's 5, 10 yards down the field. Not the case today. Kansas State is getting great penetration up front. He can't get to the line of scrimmage today. Nope. Alex 
Xander's got a lot of time. Oh, man, major league lift. Chandler took from Jerry Cooper. And now Chandler up to talk about it. That's the kind of player he is. And Cooper, who, he's not going to step down in, in terms of trash talking. He's got, he's got some garbage of his own. <laughs> physical football players right here though Alexander I don't know if I'm Chandler I go back to the huddle and say thanks a lot for hanging me out to try with a high throw and Cooper lighting my he's counting my ribs which rib do I want to light up and I'll take the highest one pretty good lick Cooper is a terrific player 6 one 205 pound sophomore from the state of Texas he's everything you want in a strong safety Oh, intercepted late throw. Carter stepped in front. And this one, it looks like, will count. Second pick of the day for Carter. The first one wiped out by penalty. So die shot Carter as his second interception of the season. The sophomore from Denver. Well, the one thing that scouts look for is this type of route. What kind of arm strength does the quarterback have in the out pattern? He did hold the football too long, threw it late. And not enough zip on it. And Carter broke on the football cleanly and made the play. Got to have, uh, it's got to be able to get through the car wash without getting wet. And Alexander didn't have that type of velocity on it, nor did he deliver it soon enough. Well, when you talk about arm strength, I don't know if anybody has better arm strength than the guy who just jogged on the field, Michael Bishop. Legendary, supposedly. To throw the football 93 yards in the air. That's 20 yards more than Brett Favre does in the quarterback challenges. Bishop. That's a tremendous throw to his tight end, Justin Swift. That thing was a blue dart. And Justin Swift is loving life right here. Normally the tight end has been, in, been staying in and helping in pass protection because the offensive line's been struggling a little bit. But now they feel they can release the big tight end down the middle of the football field. And he makes a great catch of the football, delivered nicely from Bishop. Bishop breaks contain. Bishop still going. Jeez. Oh, man, 15-yard line, vintage Michael Bishop. When he tucks it down, he's one of the better running backs in college football. Well, he's a running back at the quarterback position. He is amazing. I think he might be the second-best running back to Ricky Williams in the conference. Watch him direct Swift. Swift doesn't know where he's going to break, so he says, well, I'm not going to wait for his big man. I'm jetting it up the football field. Nice little spin off of initial contact. About five or six yards after contact on that carry by Bishop. Well, he's the leading rusher in today's game. Nine carries, 90 yards. Boy, he's something. Hickson, he's going to be throwing for a loss. Our man, Steve Bratton, who had 13 tackles last week against the University of Colorado. He's from Colorado. The coaching staff said if there was one game left in his career, he wanted to play against CU, and he's the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week after his performance. Didn't get recruited by Colorado. Paid him back last week. Bishop on a blitz in trouble, and he gets away. Running through tacklers wow. to the one-yard line. That's your quarterback lowering his pads. Well, I mentioned it before. He's playing hip flexor problem? Jeez, I'd love to have his hip flexor problem. This guy has got a capital C on his chest. He will compete. Already responsible for 242 yards offense. Look, the, the pressure gets there. They've got him dead to rights. Three people. They lose contain and he makes them pay. You have to finalize that. If you're Brown and you're right on top of Bishop, and then once he's out to the outside, he's running through defenders. It takes three to bring him to the turf, but Patrick Brown had him dead to rights, and Bishop just broke contain, got outside, and then it was payback time. Do you know what? You look at all the great runners, and it seems like even on a wet field, they seem to be running uh, 
in 75 degree temperatures and don't see any of the rain. He's amazing. Well, six years ago, a relentless defensive effort helped Kansas shut down Kansas State 31 to 7. Let's flash back. Look at the pressure that Kansas State is providing right here. If I'm not mistaken, this football team, Gilbert Brown was involved defensively. And, here, here, and here's here. Big Gilbert right here. Not as big as he is in his Green Bay days. No, he's a trim Gilbert Brown that's, there. That's right, before he hit the big backs. But this defensive effort by Kansas was outstanding. And it's the last time, 1992 is the last time that Kansas beat Kansas State. And they did it handily because of that defensive pressure coming from everywhere. It's five-game winning streak for Bill Snyder and Kansas State, the longest in the series for Kansas State. At one point, Kansas won 10 in a row back in the 60s. Well, they're on a school record 15-game winning streak overall right now. That's second to UCLA nationally. UCLA has won 16 in a row. Michael Bishop, over 100 yards rushing in the game. And look at the comparison, 97 and 98. Just one pick this year, Dave. One pick to 15 touchdown passes. That ratio is off the charts. And the completion percentage, last year a paltry 43%, now 52%. Dramatic improvement. Murphy back in the game in the D5. He lost the football. Bishop's got to chase it down. Uh oh. All the way back to the 30 yard line. Thrown away. And Patrick Brown <laughs> tackles him. When was the last time you saw a 28 yard loss on a play? Wow. Now that, that's a big momentum deal for Kansas because instead of giving up a touchdown potentially, this is now a challenging field goal opportunity for Martin Gramatica. What a play. And once again, the wet, heavy football. It looked like Goolsby knocked it out of Bishop's hand before he could get it to Murphy. Goolsby, as he's the lead blocker, came a little bit too close to Bishop and knocked the ball clean. He could not get a good handoff to Murphy. Then it was off to the races in the wrong direction. But Goolsby, trying to hug it in there tight, got a little bit too tight. You know, Ardell Wiegand, the defensive coordinator for Kansas, once Bishop picked it up, he still probably was holding his breath. Maybe, maybe he'll make something happen on this. Bishop, late throw, complete to Swift. The flag comes in. Swift down at the 12-yard line, tackled by Brown and Bratton. Well, let's see what's going on here. Down the football field, Harris and McDonald were getting into it. I don't know what they're going to call defensive pass interference or defensive holding. Harris was tangled up with McDonald. I'd take the play. Swift has got, got big yards for him anyway. Well, the thing is, it would bring a first down. Right. So would the play. No, it wouldn't. You're no, right. No, the play, right. for, they can only score a touchdown. Exactly. It was originally first and goal at the one. And then they lost 27. <laughs> so they may take the penalty. There's 32 seconds left in the first half. Holding on the defense. It was on an eligible receiver, but the penalties declined. Third down. Oh, they're gonna they're gonna make take one shot at the end zone. They're gonna take the yards and one shot at the end zone. And if they don't, they'll they'll settle for the field goal. This is definitely a much easier range for Martin Gramatica. They took the 15 yards or so. Bishop, hey. he's gonna get sacked. That's the intentional grounding. That's going to cost him. You know what? You're right, Dave. That could be really costly. Yep. And Michael Bishop just grabbed the official. You can't do that. Take it easy, Michael. Don't be grabbing officials. Intentional grounding as he was going to the turf. He threw the football to avoid the sack. You can't do that. Michael Bishop was saying, I had a receiver over there that I was trying to throw to, but you can't, in the grass like that, going down, throw it away to avoid the sack in the pocket. So they lose yards from the point of the foul, and they lose the down. So now it becomes Martin Gramatica with a more dicey field goal opportunity. He's probably happy about the penalty. Gets to show off his leg a little more. Intentional grounding on the offense. Loss of down, fourth down. Take a look at Michael Bishop in the pocket once again. Pretty good pressure from Kansas. They come with the blitz. It's a three-step drop. You're going to get rid of the football. Coverage was there as a result of the three, the coverage, the three-step drop. Dwyer gets there, and as Bishop's going down on the sack, throws it away, intentional grounding. 
42 yards away for Gramatica. Good snap, good hold, and you know what? He missed it. Hold it. And maybe the yardage was the difference. So Gramatica, who rarely misses, doesn't get it there from 42 yards. But Kansas was offside. Kansas was offside. Wow. And Gramatica crosses himself and says, boy, I'm going to get another chance. Lined up offside. Nobody jumped. Lined up over the line of scrimmage in the neutral zone. Well, that's a shot in the toe right there, negatively. Well, it's been sloppy in terms of the conditions, and it's also been a little bit sloppy from Terry Allen and Bill Snyder's perspective. A whole lot of flags today. Martin Gramatica, you want to talk about a competitor. In the Fiesta Bowl, a win against Syracuse, a convincing win last year, he missed two field goals. He was going to go to Mexico on vacation. He canceled the trip and instead worked out every day in the summer kicking uh, the football. Five yards closer in, and this one is good. That's you do not give Martin Gramatica second chances. Absolutely. Huge penalty by Kansas by crowding the football and lining up offside. Wow. So with 10 ticks left in the opening half, it is now Kansas State 23, Kansas 6. Well, what an odd, odd deal that was. First and goal inside the one, and you lose 28 yards. Yep. At that point, I would have thought that Michael Bishop, the guy that got you there, you might stay in that direction. But nothing wrong with an ISO other than the fact that if the court, if the fullback with his elbow knocks the ball out of the quarterback's hands and can't get the clean handoff to Murphy, which is what happened, the ball skids backwards on the slick turf, 27-yard loss. And then at that point, it was Halloween. I, I think that's what's going on here. I think the goblins and gremlins and everybody else is out early in the stadium here that could be could i mean be. it's a, it's kind of a spooky performance right now for both teams from time to time and what are you dressing up as tonight by the way uh i can't say <laughs> you're, you're, you're dressing in drag again well, I'm, I'm, I'm debating it I, what, what's the most popular costume in the country I, that I don't know. I haven't done research on that. My, 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 my report tells me it's Monica Lewinsky, so I'm debating uh, dressing up. So you're going to be a 300-pound Monica I'm Lewinsky? I'm debating it. I see. Oh, look at this. Oh, man. Conley with the football. And it's going to be Kansas State football. It bounced right off of the big lineman, Dersher. It hit him. It went 10 yards, hit Dersher, bounced right back to Kansas State. They're in position for more points. Gramatica, this is going to be a squib kick. You know, kick it along the line of scrimmage low and hard, and it hit Dircher right in the posterior and bounces a true bounce right back up in the, into the hands of Conley. He's happy to take it. And this will be an opportunity for Michael Bishop to show off his arm. If this was not into the win, Bill Snyder might elect to throw Gramatica out there. We saw him do that right before the end of the first half against Northern Illinois. And he thumped the 65-yarder. The longest in NCAA history since they got away from the tee. The out cut. And McDonald's out of bounds with one second left. And here comes Dramatica. And again, this is going to be into the win. So this is a lot more difficult. It will be in the neighborhood of 60 yards. In fact, it will be a full 60 yards away. And once again, a lot of times you're fearful of the low kick. But Martin Gramatica, watch the elevation that he gets on this football, even though it's a 60-yard attempt. I think somebody got a hand on it. That is low and short. And the first half is complete. We've had a little of everything and a whole lot of Wildcats. 23 to 6. They lead their rivals, the Kansas Jayhawks, at the break. Wildcats trying to go to 8 0 for the first time ever. They lead 23 6. Back with Dave Lapham. I'm Drew Goodman. And Kansas State showed a whole lot of Michael Bishop in the first half. He was the story. You know, that hip flexor. I'd like to have a hip flexor problem like Michael Bishop has because he put the Wildcats on the board first. Quarterback draw. He finds the bubble over the right guard from 10 yards out, up and over. 
Michael Bishop showing the aggressiveness necessary right there. Jay Alexander to Chandler, a little fade pattern. It's defensive back completely turned around. Kansas on the board. Then Murphy up and over on the old pullback ISO from Goolsby. And that puts uh, Kansas State back in firm control of this football game. And Michael Bishop has been the story. He is the leader. That's right. Kansas says uh, struggle to move the ball against the great Wildcat defense. We'll come back 30 more minutes from Lawrence. Football is brought to you by Red Roof Inns. Nice people and an honest value. By Sitco. Depend on Sitco when it counts. And by First Plus Financial. At First Plus, you don't need equity, you just need a home. The rain continues to fall in Lawrence, Kansas. We're at Memorial Stadium with Dave Lapham and Jim Knox. I'm Drew Goodman. The Wildcats leading the Jayhawks, trying to make it six in a row over their rivals. Two schools about an hour apart. And Kansas will get the ball. David Winbush slides to the ground, shy of the 20-yard line. Let's take a look at our Sitco first-half numbers. 281 yards in total offense for Kansas State. Just 45 for Kansas. And aided immeasurably by the differential in field position. Look at the drive start for Kansas as opposed to Kansas State. And two to one or better in every margin, every statistical First category. So you can understand why K-State enjoys a 17-point lead at this juncture. Cross sweep to Winbush, and he's going to lose a couple of yards. In the backfield again is Jeff Kelly. And Let's talk now to Jim Knox. Jim? All right, Drew. The weather continues to be downright miserable. The rain continues to pour, and it's going to be a dark and dreary day, I'm afraid, the rest of the way. Now, I talked to Terry Allen, the Kansas coach, and he told me they have to find some type of way to control Michael Bishop and also get their new guy, Jay Alexander, some good plays in order to come up with victorious today. Drew? All right, Jim, try to stay dry. I noticed that a whole lot of Kansas fans... At least haven't returned from halftime. Whether they're going to return is uh, still debatable. That pass is in the ground short of Honoree Childs. There's still a lot of folks in purple out in the stands as Kansas State has the big 23-6 to lead. If you're just joining us, Zach Wegner suffered a concussion very early in the game, his second in as many weeks, and also a gash on his hand, on one of his fingers on his throwing hand that required more than 20 stitches. So Jay Alexander has been the quarterback almost throughout. And it looks like he will be the rest of the season. Third and 12, he drops it, and pressure coming. Jeff Kelly got there. That is the third sack of the game for Kansas State. And on the opening possession of the second half, Kansas goes backwards. And Kelly involved in his second sack of the day. I believe shotgun snap, a shade high. Alexander, because of the slick football, can't control it. Takes one dribble right back up to him. Everybody meets at the quarterback, but Kelly is the uh, major impetus that takes him to the turf. Boy, when you're behind by 17 and have to throw in these conditions, that is tough. Tyler will punt it into the wind. David Allen will not get a chance to return this one. No matter, great field position. It'll be at the 35-yard line for Kansas State. They'll have the football there with the 23-6 lead. Here are the staggering ratings. And there's a whole formula that you and I probably can't figure out as to how you come up with uh, Mr. Sagarin's ratings. But Kansas State number two in the country and a whole lot of Big 12 teams in the top 30 or 40. Oh, exactly. You got uh, half the conferences in the top 25. And Colorado just missing at 26 in the Sagarin ratings. That's pretty strong conference top to bottom. Bishop on the option. Picks it as the corner. And he got a great downfield block from McDonald inside the 10-yard line. Dave, you love talking about how the wideouts will block. What a job by Darnell McDonald. He held his block for about 10 minutes. He really did, and Goolsby got the corner. 
for Hickson. Goolsby was the big key at the fullback position, so the fullback got it started, and the receiver finalized it. Watch number 30 in the white, leading Hickson to the line of scrimmage. He'll take the linebacker to the turf. Down he goes, clean as a whistle. Now down the football field, as you described, Drew. There's McDonald taking his man out of bounds. Now they run the option to the near side. Bishop, late pitch, and Murphy knocked out at the two and a half. Kansas State going for the knockout punch right here. Now the, uh, they one, two, three and out against Kansas's offense. Another three and out for the Kansas State defensive football team. That was a key. Kansas trying to avoid three and outs. They've had way too many today. And then short punt because he's kicking into the wind. Short field for the offense. And they're trying to just knock them out right here. They're trying to take the Jayhawks down. Second and goal. Murphy cuts back. And he's knocked down from behind. He lost the football, but I think they're going to say he was down. Patrick Brown chased him down. And it'll be third and goal at the one. Pretty good speed by Brown because they don't come much faster than number three. Inside by two. You know, we earlier on we showed the Sagarin ratings, and the Sagarin ratings are one of the pieces, one of the components of the uh, champion, the bowl championship series standing ranking. So they are a significant consideration. Swift all alone, touchdown. Michael Bishop, first touchdown pass of the day, number 16 on the year against just one interception. Well, the big tight end getting involved, as said before, he was in a lot during the course of this season as an extra blocker in pass protection. The offensive line struggling, so Kansas State coaching staff decided to make him a third tackle. Not out in many routes, but got a big pass down the middle in the first half and catches a touchdown pass from Michael Bishop. Bishop now, 16 touchdowns, one interception. Wow. Gramatica makes it. 30 to 6. Swift's second touchdown of the year. It is all Kansas State. Here, peak down the road to November 14th when they match up with Nebraska and Manhattan. No chance under Bill Snyder. No, in Kansas State, uh, people wondering, you know, they have six out of seven at home. How will they do on the road? Well, they jump on the, on the road this time, big time. Romatica's kick goes past Winbush on through the end zone, so the Jayhawks will have it at their own 20-yard line. Let's take a look at Michael Bishop completing the touchdown pass to Swift once again. You roll Michael Bishop out, give him a two-way go, puts a lot of pressure on the secondary and outside linebackers, and Justin Swift all by his lonesome. Somebody lost drop coverage or lost Jason Swift in the action. Easy touchdown toss for Michael Bishop. Ten times today on first down, Dave. Kansas has run the football. They've netted minus three yards. Alexander wanted to throw it back. He wasn't there. And then underneath, he gets it to Fulton. And it'll be a gain of about five yards. You can see that Jay Alexander has athletic ability. Oh, definitely. He's got some mobility. That time he threw the ball back late to the middle of the field. The only thing that's questionable maybe a little bit is his arm strength, but uh, he's got good vision. He, he definitely likes to compete. He likes to be out there playing the game of football, but throwing it back across your body late sometimes can result in tragedy. That's kind of a cardinal no-no there. Sprint draw to Winbush. And he gets destroyed after about a yard gain. It's been that kind of day for David Winbush. He spent much of it on his back. Well, this Kansas State defensive football team gets up in the bit for running backs that are coming off some success. And they shut Ricky Williams down, 25 carries, like 43 yards on 25 carries. And, and today, doing the same thing to David Winbush. They've shut down a lot of great running backs in the Big 12. This run defense is extraordinary. Third down and four. Blitz coming. Alexander. Gets it away, and he'll make the catch. Boy, that's a great catch. 
On a tough day to catch the football, but uh, I guess uh, it wasn't such a great catch. He trapped it. Yeah, it was a good play. You know, here you got a kid, Harrison Hill, that's a center field on the baseball team. He's got the good hands. Looked like a shortstop right there. He short hopped the ball very, very effectively. Two officials that couldn't see, didn't have a good angle, ruled it complete. But one further down the football field definitely saw it hit the turf and ruled the ball incomplete. Once again, Alexander pump faking, nowhere to go with the football. The coverage is outstanding. Rolls the ball back late across the middle. Did he juggle it or did he get his hands underneath it? Did the ball hit the turf and bounce it back up into his body or did his hands bring it up? The official said ground did. Tyler's been busy. He'll punt it again. This is a better effort. David Allen stays away from it, and it rolls dead around the 35-yard line. 30 to 6, Wildcats. Halloween in Lawrence, Kansas. I don't know how much trick-or-treating will be. Uh, accomplished this afternoon it's going to be soggy it's going to be soggy but kansas state looks like they'll return to manhattan very happy unless kansas really gets on a roll here in the final quarter and a half here's murphy trying to run wide and a good job defensively coming up number 23 is muhammad abdul rahim to tackle frank murphy who is the junior college player of the year the last season Boy, Frank Murphy, definite long strider. He is, uh, he's a guy that does bear a striking resemblance. As I mentioned earlier to, to Robert Smith, now of Minnesota Viking fame, but a great player at Ohio State. Rod Hudson was at Ohio State when Robert Smith was there. Same body type, same long stride. I think Murphy, though, packs maybe a little bit more of a wallet. Here's a hitch, and Paris with the catch. First on the day for the senior Gavin Paris from South Pasadena, California. And it'll set up third down. Keep in mind, we have not seen James Garcia today, the punter for Kansas State. It's like the old Maytag uh, repairman. You never see James Garcia. Yeah, he hopes he doesn't let her today. Because right now, I'm sure it's hard to, to stay properly loose on the sideline, to stretch out. It's cold, it's damp. It's a tough day for kickers. It's like kicking a, a brick out there, too, the football. Bishop wants a different play. Bishop late throw down the middle, and it's complete despite the deflection to the 37-yard line of Kansas, Darnell McDonald. When it's flicking, everything works. Well, you're not kidding. Man, when it rains, it pours, and it is pouring today. I'm not sure who it was. Was it was it Piles? No, it might have been Bratton in his in his drop as a linebacker. Yeah, just go right through Bratton's hands and deflects right to McDonald. That's the old tip drill, concentration on the football. Boy, Bratton probably says to Bishop, I can't believe how hard you throw that thing. I mean, that was a perfect deflection right to McDonald. Here's Bishop keeping. Uh oh. And if he kept his feet, he would have had the sideline. Another first down for Kansas State to the 28-yard line. You know, Michael Bishop was over 100 yards in the first half, and then that 28-yard loss got credited to his rushing stat. So he's got to climb back over 100 now. Right, and, and that was due to uh, a little, it was an isolation. Goolsby knocked the ball out of Bishop's hands before he could get it to Murphy. But he does get credit for the fumble because Murphy never had control of the football. He takes the loss. He takes the 28-yard negation. Let me correct something. I guess uh, Bishop just short of a first down. It'll be second and one. See by his numbers, he's done a whole lot of damage today. Bishop, and he tried to gun the post route to Darnell McDonald. And at his feet, he didn't quite have the follow-through that, that he would have hoped as John Williams was at his feet. He ended up falling over John Williams after he threw that football. Is this four down territory for Kansas State? It looks like they may go for it here on fourth. Uh, excuse me, it's only third and short. You know, a 
Frank Murphy getting a lot of snaps behind Eric Hickson. You don't see Marlon Charles much anymore, the senior who's played a lot of football in his career. Absolutely. I wonder if he's in the doghouse or just talent is limiting his snaps. Ooh. Here's Murphy, who lost his footing but got a first down. I think Murphy thought he was off to the races. Well, Murphy tripped over Paris, his, his receiver. I mean, he was he was there big time. Paris was was sealing it off on the edge. And it looked like as, as Paris came across the formation to make the block, he got knocked backwards and he tripped right over his wide receiver's left foot. Too bad, because he was gone big. Michael Bishop today unofficially has counted for 282 yards in total offense and a couple of touchdowns. They're going to measure. And I thought he had it easily. I guess he got it by a smidgen. 8.30 to go in the third quarter. 30-6, to six, Kansas State. They have dominated in every facet as they have done every weekend this year. Bishop's 282. Kansas State has 353 yards in total offense. So Michael Bishop has about 75% of the total offense today. Kansas only has 45 yards. All day for Bishop. And this one he throws into the ground. A flag has come down in the secondary. And we'll wait and see who it is against. You'd have to think it was defensive holding, but who knows? Strange one today. Personal foul, face mask. Wow. As they're coming off the line of scrimmage, somebody must have got tangled up in the face mask when they were getting rerouted. Well, that's very unusual. During the course of the play, in full action, there's a face mask. Face mask on the defense. Automatic first down. It was an incompletion. It wasn't at, trying to make a tackle. It's as contact happens down the football field, somebody grabbed the face mask. That's very unusual. You know, the number of snaps that Kansas State is now taking in the time of possession in accordance with those number of snaps is starting to be staggering, I'm sure, as well. Kansas State is in a significant game of keep away right now. Last week, the same thing against Iowa State. They had the ball for more than 40 minutes in that game. And the play clock was at zero. They might not have gotten this one snapped. Dead ball, false start on the offense. It'll be a five yard penalty and remain first down. You know, one change that uh, Kansas State has made up front in their offensive line. Big Ryan Young has gone from right to left tackle. Thomas Barnett is over at the right tackle position for a good part of the football game. Ryan Young and Brian Hanley on that left side. Uh, is Barnett on the right side. Young and Hanley on the left side. That's a big old tandem over there. Bishop to the end zone. He had a man. It was Swift on the strong safety, Michael Allen. He was a little too strong with the throw. So they're getting Justin Swift involved today. Big man, 6'3", 255 pounder. And he's shown on a couple of occasions that he can get that big body down the football field and stretch it a little bit as a tight end. Pretty good athlete. I'm sure he'll get a look at the next level. Well, some did come in costume today. Yes, they did. <laughs> And Michael Allen is grabbing him and trying to hold on. And then he was finished off by a couple other blue jerseys, so it'll set up. Third down. And not this Murphy, but Murphy's Law has taken effect uh, during spurts of this football game for Kansas. A lot of things have gone wrong that uh, anything that can go wrong has gone wrong for the Jayhawks in a lot of instances today. Kansas State has taken full advantage. Kansas State did have one defensive drive where they spit the bit. A lot of defensive penalties allowing Kansas to score and get back into the football game for a little bit. They need the three-yard line on third down, and again, flags fly. We've seen 
a whole lot of yellow handkerchiefs today. Early start by K State on this one. Dead ball, false start on the offense. It'll be a five yard penalty and remain third down. When you snap the football as a center, it has to be one smooth motion. You can't start the ball, stop it, and start it again. It has to be one continuous motion, and you saw Cummins right there. Double clutch. Can't do that. You gotta shift gears more cleanly than that. Pretty good edge in time of possession, favoring Kansas State. He had Swift again, checking it was Shad Meyer that time. And right through his hands at the goal line, so Martin Gramatica time for Kansas State. I bet it's tough as a receiver today to catch the pass from this man, Michael Bishop. Because he's still putting a lot of juice on this football. It's cold, it's wet. I bet when it hits your hands, it's not a pleasant feeling. That time could not quite be controlled. Bishop must have a big old mucker on him, though, because he's controlling that football very, very easily. There's not any sign of the ball slipping out of his hand at all. No, there really is. 40-yard field goal by Gramatica. Pushed it. And, yeah, it kind of had that fade to it. Started out like it was going to be through, and it faded to the right. So Gramatica, no good from 40. Kansas State 30, the University of Kansas 6, an rivalry that began in 1902 and has been continuous since 1911. You know, in 1910, they didn't meet. And that year, Kansas State started 7-0, lost their eighth game to Colorado College, and then won their last three, finished 10-1. Best season until the 90s for Kansas State. Alexander hit from behind, loose football. And McIntosh may be on it for Kansas State. I think Monty Beisel knocked it clear. He knocked it out of the grasp of Jay Alexander. And they did not, they ruled it was a fumble, Drew Wright. There was no indication that he was in his forward motion throwing the football. And McIntosh is indeed on it. The junior from Hollywood, Florida gives his team the football at the plus 16 yard line. Well, it's a little bit of a zone blitz. Howard, you see at the bottom of the screen drop off. Instead of rush, and they blitz linebackers, Monty Beisel beats his man around the corner and knocks the ball totally clean. McIntosh. It's a Halloween apple right there. McIntosh makes the play. The pressure's extreme. Kelly and Beisel come clean. Beisel runs him down from behind. Great acceleration. McIntosh. Boy, dip that in a little caramel, and you get yourself a nice treat right there, and that's what we do with that football on Halloween. What kind of treat? Nice little Halloween treat, little, little caramel-covered apple, Macintosh. There you go. First and ten for Michael Bishop. Kicks it. He'll run it inside the ten of the nine-yard line. Okay, you're a safety right now. Here's what you see. Offensive line getting a little movement up front. Hickson finds a crease, cuts it back. There you go, Allen. You put your helmet right across the bow and make the play. Get your nose a little dirty right there. That's what it's like if you're the safety. Michael Allen's a guy who's played in every single game that he's been eligible to play in in his Kansas career. Good strong safety. Hickson again to the end zone. Touchdown carrying people in. Hickson. That's his 25th rushing touchdown in his career. Last year he set the school record with his 24th, but tack went on. Now he has his sights set on 31. That's the career touchdown mark held by Mac Herron. Remember Mac Herron? He was about five foot three. All-purpose touchdowns in terms of returns as well as rushes and receptions. But Hickson is the career leader for rushing touchdowns. Now he's after, yeah, tiny Mac Heron. I remember him. The New England Patriots very well. Good hold by Garcia, and Gramatica pumps it through. The route is on. 37-6. Last year, Kansas State won 48-16. They're headed toward the same kind of outcome this year. 
Let's take a look at how Kansas State comes off the line of scrimmage. Goolsby seals the inside, gets his block, and then it's just sheer power by Hickson. Runs right through people. Play the guy that needs to drop a quarter in that slot is Colner. He hit Hickson, but Hickson carried him the last two or three yards into the end zone. With the score 37 to 6. Let's check the keys to victory again. Revisit them for Kansas. See what kind of grades they get. Actually, Kansas State first. Right, where they rode ready, where they're going to come out smoking. They sure did. They scored on five of their first seven possessions in the first half. Dominate special teams. They really have in terms of field position. They've dominated the field position story in this football game. And Jeff Kelly, coming back from that knee problem, has definitely contributed seven tackles. Two of those were quarterback sacks for losses. So Jeff Kelly back in the contribution category. He's stuffing the defensive stat sheet. David Winbush, two yards deep, hesitates. Now he's coming out. And uh -oh. David Winbush has the sideline. Knocked out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Check his 36-yard line. It looked like he said, oh, what the heck? He was, he was debating taking the knee and then said, you know, we're down. I might as well try to make a play. I'm going to do it. And he comes out and then disrupted the timing a little bit and runs by Cooper, showing more speed than I think people think he might have. Gets himself nice field position for his offensive unit at the 36-yard line. You know, it's funny. That happens, as you suggested, Dave, more often than you think. A hesitation in the end zone, and then a seam is created. Exactly. The relationship between the cover people and the wedge gets disrupted. Here's a delay. And not a lot of room for Julius Bruce. Well, let's take a look at what Kansas wanted to try to accomplish today to win this football game. Hits on Michael Bishop. He's been doing all the hitting. They have 15 hits on him, but it's after he's accumulated 282 yards. That's not what the plan was. Quick start. Five yards total offense in the first quarter. Fell behind early. Minimized three and outs. Over 50% of the time, they've been one, two, three punch. So that's why they're down so dramatically in this football game. Uh, spread them out. Jay Alexander out of the gun. Quarterback draw. Pretty good move by Alexander. And he'll get to the 45-yard line before Lamar Chapman and Joe Bob Clemens drop Alexander. Well, Alexander was weaving a Halloween web right there. The spotter was a, an amazing effort, just kind of making people miss, just wiggling and weaving away. Quarterback draw, design, play. And Keys is blocked pretty well right there from the offensive line, cuts up inside of it. Not, not violent cuts, but just effective enough where he shows that shiftiness. It was the swivel hip action going on for Alexander. Injured Jayhawk is definitely hurt. Or is that a Wildcat? Uh, that's a Jayhawk, and we think it is Michael Chandler. Ooh. It's Michael Chandler. Yeah, there he is, 86. Definitely hurting. He can't put any weight on that left leg whatsoever. A lot of times when you get in this situation, take a look at the right side of the screen right here. Boom. Leg whipped. You get rolled up on, and Lamar Chapman... Actually rolls up on the back. Watch, you see right here to the left of the screen, Chandler and Chapman getting into it. Leg whip and collapses that left leg. And Chandler at that point definitely is a hurt unit. On third and one, again they empty the backfield. <laughs> and I don't know if he got there. He needed a full yard, Dave. Well, he really did. And, you know, you empty the backfield to spread Kansas State out a little bit and to cozy up that quarterback sneak. But inside, Kansas State's defensive tackles, boy, have done a good job, as you described a couple of times, more than a couple of times during the course of the day, Drew, controlling the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Kansas is short right now. They won't even measure. Nope. And Terry Allen says, stay out there. The punt unit started to come on the field. Allen waved them off, said, we're going for it. He's going to call timeout now. And now he's going to get together with Jay Alexander. Check some scores from around the country while we have a moment. 37 to 6 here in Lawrence. Kansas State winning. Georgia Tech, after being tied early with Maryland, they have rolled since that point. Penn State 
Convincing 27-0 shutout of Illinois. Tennessee, third rank, 42-7 over the Gamecocks. And Syracuse and Pitt, much closer game than many would have suspected, including Dave Lapa. Yes, that's, a, that's always a big battle in the East, though. Virginia Tech comfortably over West Virginia right now. A couple of touchdown lead. After losing to Temple, Arkansas, 10 points better than Auburn right now. Terry Bath, no longer the coach of the Auburn Tigers in Iowa State in the second quarter, leading Oklahoma 7-0 at Owen Field in Norman. And this game was delayed by lightning down in Lubbock, and they're underway evidently, and Texas Tech has a field goal lead on the University of Missouri. That's going to be a very good matchup. I don't think uh, more than a field goal separates those two schools. Well, I'm not sure that a field goal separates a lot of schools in the Big 12. I mean, the top and bottom are closer together now. You know, it's not, there's not such a big gap between programs in the in the Big 12. It, it really is the Big 12 and not the Big 6 and the Little 6 anymore, it doesn't seem like. That's a great point. Bill Snyder was talking about that uh, to you and I the other day. In fact, uh, the difference between the top and bottom is very slim. And oh. a loss. Ball, the ball's ball on the ground. Nobody ball sees up. it. Yeah. That'll be a first down. Did they blow it dead? I never heard a whistle. And if Kansas recovers here, I mean, Kansas State absolutely lit it up. And the ball squirted out about five yards forward. But they're saying I think the knee was down before the ball came free. The official saying that, that the knee was down. Or did somebody blow their whistle and deaden the play? The only person that can advance a fourth down fumble is the fumbler. The ball comes back to the fumbling spot. First down, Kansas State. That's right. That's the Dave Casper rule. Remember that game? The Holy Roller. The Holy Roller, right? In, in Oakland, when Dave Casper intentionally was knocked, or the Oakland Raiders intentionally fumbled the ball forward, and the Dave Casper finally recovered in the end zone for Tesla. So they made a rule if it's fourth down and you fumble, you're the only one that can recover it. But the funny thing about that is that ball usually, I mean, the ball is going to draw a crowd. Right. And that ball was on the ground for about two or three, 1,000 before somebody jumped on it. Nobody saw it. No, that was amazing. It was just harmlessly laying there. So Kansas State again sets up shop in Kansas territory. And they give to Hickson, who spins his way for three to the 41-yard line. Well, Kansas State, one of the big keys in this game has been first down. Kansas State has had 18, now 19 first down plays for about 144 yards, averaging over seven yards a play. Kansas, 14 plays on first down for a total of zero yards. They've rushed the ball 12 times for minus 11. They've thrown it twice for plus 11. 14 plays for nothing. Bishop throws, McDonald again a huge cushion, he'll have the first down to the 31, an advance of 10 in front of Andrew Davison, the true freshman from Detroit. And the cushion that Davison is giving him is understandable, you've got a, an All-American candidate, a Blitnikoff candidate, a wide receiver, and you're a true freshman. So you don't want to uh, be cooked down the football field. You let him take it underneath and try to make a sure tackle. There's Chandler in the golf cart, heading for the old x-rays, I'm sure. Goolsby and Hickson in the eye. They give it to Goolsby. And the crowd, the Kansas State fans, shout out Goolsby. Few yards, and we check in with Jim Knox. All right, Drew. Big Dave is correct. They are heading to the X-ray room. They checked out Michael Chandler's ankle right now. It looks like it's sprained. They're going to see if it's broken, but it definitely looks like Michael Chandler is through for the afternoon. And I can speak from experience. A lot of times, when the play, when you get rolled up on from behind, like he did when you're trying to make a block on a play, a lot of times that does result in significant injury. If you, you never see it coming. Goolsby got five, second and five with Murphy in there. Three-step drop, oh, fade route, and McDonald may have been grabbed by Davison, and yes, he was. Their feet tangled up, but McDonald beat Davison on a double move. The out and up. Davison, uh, in the official's mind, intentionally tangled feet up because he knew he was beaten. Sometimes it's incidental. That time it was almost like a tripping motion.
Davison, we talked about a moment ago, he's 18, true freshman. They're picking on him a little bit. Yeah, they can they're find you. Again. They can find you when you're inexperienced. Let's take a look at it at the top of the screen. You see already it's uh, already the, the tripping and everything has occurred. That's the tail end of the play. Davison pulls his hands off like, oh, I didn't do anything. That's usually an indication you did something. That's right. The hand was firmly in the cookie jar because he was burned. And a lot of times, it's interesting, you know, you, the guy gives cushion, you throw underneath, and then he tightens it up, you give the double move, and then you have him between a rock and a hard place. Block at the catch at the eight-yard line. And that's the fourth reception on the day for Aaron Lockett, who's closing in on a 100-yard day. I think we may have two of the shortest in terms of height players in the NCAA. Lockett and Winbush. I don't know. I don't know who's taller. I'd like to see him stand back to back and measure the height. But both of them in that five foot seven inch range, but they both got the jackhammer feet. Both very productive, no question. And movement on the offensive line, it looked like. Big Ryan Young, it looked like. And he was backing out of his stance. Dead ball, false start on the offense. It'll be a five-yard penalty and remain second down. Well, between Henley and Young over there, you got about 650 pounds of beef on that left side. The field tilts a little bit in that direction. There's big Ryan Young. I'd say a good 330. That was an early season way in. I think the big fella may be more than that now. And Henley, depending on pregame meal, may be pushing 330 himself. They got some size over there. Here's Murphy with a block. He takes a pretty good shot about the nine yard line. Greg Erb came up and blew him a kiss. I love Goolsby. He was the one that threw the block again. I'll tell you, the percentage of times that Goolsby gets his linebacker to the turf is dramatic. Very unselfish football player. They've given the big dog a few bones today, let him run the ball some. But watch, check this one out. Watch him take Allen right to the turf. Boom. That's excellent. I mean, the key right there is don't throw too early. Get right up on top of him, then throw your body and cut. A lot of guys get anxious and lurch their body out there too soon, and, and, and the linebacker or safety is able to play right off of you. Goolsby has it timed out very, very well. I think he fooled Allen. I think Allen figured he was going to try to take him up top. Run him over. That's true. Give him a different, different look. Change it up. Third down at five. Toward McDonald. And good coverage this time by the rookie corner, Davison. And the freshman hung in there, and it'll be fourth down. I like the idea, but I would have run more of a true fade. A little bit different route than the, than the true fade right there, but you like that mismatch in terms of size and strength. You have a true freshman operating against an upperclassman. And the, and the true freshman obviously has to hit the weight room to, to achieve that kind of strength. Dramatic has been busy today. She tried a 60-yarder earlier and missed. And this one... Line drive right through there for Grammatica. And the score increases to 40 to 6 with 31 seconds left in the third quarter. Let's take a look at the Big 12 conference standings entering this weekend. Final weekend in October. Kansas State 4-0 in conference play. Looks to go 5-0 and 8-0 for the first time ever. Nebraska looms on the 14th, though Nebraska has a tough one today with an improved Longhorn team. And in the south standings, Texas A&M is in the driver's seat. Texas needs a win to have their game, you would figure, against Texas A&M mean something in late November. And that's why the Texas Tech-Missouri game is so big today. Tech still in the hunt, and they've got the early field goal lead on Missouri in that game that was delayed by a lightning strike. And a new deal this week with the Independence Bowl, so the Big 12 is guaranteed to have at least six bowl teams. And really, six of the teams in the Big 12 are top 25 caliber teams, so that's a good deal this year for the Big 12. They've got more than, uh, more than enough worthy candidates. Grammatica, this time a little more lead in the foot, and he kicks it right through the end zone. Winbush won't get 
uh, turn to return that kick. Romanico, who set a school record today with four field goals, goes to the sidelines. And here is the goal picture. The BCS, Kansas State still in the hunt. Nebraska potentially could be in the hunt, though Kansas State in the best position because they're unbeaten. The Cotton Bowl will have the Big 12 runner-up. So plenty of teams will go bowling. Plenty of teams deserve to go bowling in this conference. Yep. And Curry, his first carry of the day. That's Dustin Curry, a senior from Waverly, Kansas. Simino in on the play. I really like Mark Simino. And you know, you don't really notice the absence of Travis Oaks. Oaks' 40-game streak as a starter at linebacker for Kansas State snapped due to injury. But boy, they are a machine. This is a, a defensive group that understands the scheme and make adjustments as well as anybody in college football. And the numbers show it. They're great. Our Dr. Pepper Big 12 Game of the Week, Kansas and Kansas State, 96th get-together. We head off to the fourth quarter. Drew Goodman, Dave Lapham, Jim Knox, Kansas facing a second and seven at their own 23. On the wrong end of a 40-6 to six count, David Winbush in the flat. And had he caught it, he would have lost more yards. And they were trying to run a screen pass. And really, the first thing you have to do as an offensive line is stop the rush of the defensive line, hold them for 1,001, 1,002, and then release. And every time Kansas has tried to screen, they haven't really stymied the initial charge of the defensive line and has disrupted the timing on almost every occasion. The Kansas had a breakthrough game last week against Colorado. Rushing the ball for a ton against a good defense. Yep. 268 yards for Winbush. Winning by 16 points, but they have not gotten anything going against Kansas State today. Wow. Intercepted by Simino. Flag probably for an excessive celebration, but they have the football. Mark Simino with the pick is first of the year. This defensive football team is mobile, athletic, tremendous agility, and Simino fits all of it. Alexander steps up in the pocket, throws late. Simino tips it to himself and makes the catch. It's just a very uh, athletic play by a by a gifted linebacker. They may not be the most physical in terms of. You know, just bruising you, knocking you around. But they're they're tough to block. They're athletic. They stay on their feet. And they're tough enough. I mean, they're not going to give ground. They give ground grudgingly. But they're so, they get after you. Everything's downhill. They're on your side of the line of scrimmage, it seems like, every time. Dead ball. And if personal foul against Kansas State. Be a 15-yard penalty, first and 10. Yeah, they have some good backups. Travis Litton's playing a lot today, Davis. You talked about with Oaks out of there. And a week ago, Ben Lieber played the middle backer position for Jeff Kelly and did a terrific job. He had five tackles behind the line of scrimmage against Iowa State, so there's depth there also. You know, Kansas State has 12 interceptions on the season by 11 different players. Right, it was 10 by 10 different guys coming in. Now they got 12 by 11 different guys, and Kansas had 10 interceptions on the season by eight different guys, so everybody involved defensively for both of these teams. Four giveaways of the Jayhawks, so it's huge. Bishop still out there to begin the fourth quarter, and he's still throwing. And he's got the ball to the 27-yard line complete to lock it. Aaron Lockett talks all the time to his older brother, Kevin. Totally different style of player. Hey, Kevin's a bigger receiver. Much bigger receiver. This version, more diminutive, but boy, he's got this. He's got the wheels to stretch the field. And he's the fastest, or along with Murphy, the two fastest players for Kansas State. Marlon Charles, who we mentioned earlier, that's his first carry in a while, at least since Frank Murphy arrived. I'm telling you, Marlon Charles, I remember when University of Cincinnati played Kansas State a couple, three years ago. 
At that time, Rex Ryan was the defensive coordinator at UC, and he said Marlon Charles reminded him of a, another version of a Barry Sanders-type runner. So that's the kind of depth that Kansas State has in this football team. They're, they're getting a lot of guys that want to come here and play football. Charles trying to make the most of his opportunity. Swift will be about a yard and a half shy of a first down. Swift blew a tire. <laughs> Swift ran right out of his right shoe. He had a blowout. Yeah, he's got to go change. He's got to get to the sideline, get the jack going. And now, see, the worst thing about this is Swift has to run off the field without his shoe. So now he's got a wet sock. Oh, yeah. And the tape job underneath soaked. You know, so he's basically done for the day in terms of being somewhat comfortable. Bill Snyder looking down saying, how did you run out of that tread? <laughs> They're down in a couple. They like to run option here, and that's what they do. And a late pitch. That was almost a forward lateral to Charles. He's out of bounds at the 12-yard line. A couple of flags down to Drew in the secondary. See what those are all about. Before that snap, Dave, 311 yards of total offense for Michael Bishop. And Kansas State does have a tendency on third and one, third and two. They have 12 men on the field. Illegal participation by Kansas. That's the second time now, once offensively and once defensively, they would have had 12 men on the field. Kansas State still able to execute a first down option carry with uh, 12, 12 people lined up defensively. Illegal participation on the defense, 12 players, it'll be a first down. Well, there might be some schools who are in Kansas State schedule who want to petition the NCAA to allow them to play 12 guys defensively. Really? Kansas State does have a little bit of a tendency, though. More than half the time on third and one, third and two, they're running that option, but a lot of great teams that even if you know what they're doing still go ahead and stop me terry allen said that yesterday he said we may get lined up maybe in the perfect defense to make a play but can't get it done because of michael bishop right you have great athletes you know the green bay packers the green bay packer sweep heck you knew they were going to run it and stop it it's a different deal First and goal inside the 10. Here's the option again. Bishop, oh. great cut, touchdown. And he's going to run toward the Kansas State section of Memorial Stadium. 46 to 6 Wildcats. No letdown today in Lawrence. just wants a penalty. They think that's excessive celebration for Bishop to run through the end zone and celebrate with the crowd. No flag on this one. Michael Bishop, super competitor. No doubt about it. This young man, he refuses to lose or refuses to even let you get close. <laughs> Dramatica makes it 47 to 6. 12.48 to go in the fourth quarter. Big celebration tonight in Manhattan. October 31st, you check the calendar, says Halloween, and... In terms of trick or treat, it's been a treat for Kansas State. Been a big trick for Kansas. 47 to 6. Kansas State pounding their neighbors in Lawrence. And Michael Bishop came out dressed like Superman today and he played like him. You know, he wears that costume most every Saturday. Big old S on his chest. Here's Childs. And Henri Childs tumbles ahead to about the 38-yard line, a return of 14. They wanted to get Childs involved in the offense quite a bit today, Dave. They haven't been able to get that uh, 28 much. No. Well, they got behind so quickly by such a margin that the game plan went flying out the coach's window up here in the up in the press box area. I saw papers flying out. It's hard. It's hard to stay with your initial game plan when you have to play catch-up so soon. Curry's in at tailback, and Curry gets the call. 
And he runs into Damian McIntosh. You know, one difference that I've seen in the defensive performances today, how many times do we see Goolsby knocking people to the ground and other people knocking people to the ground for cutback lanes? You never see, not never, that's a long time, but rarely see Kansas State defensive players on the ground. It's not a crime to get knocked on the ground, but you got to get back up real quickly. And when K-State gets knocked down, they're off the ground in a heartbeat. the ground in a heartbeat when they're on their feet they get to the ball carrier in a heartbeat and they get three four five guys there every play this is a great defensive unit they understand the system they understand how they're going to be attacked they make adjustments to adjustments they're just they, they separate from blocks they everybody's got great hand placement technique and they rally to the football I mean, you always see more than one helmet for Kansas State around the football. They never leave a teammate out on the island. Mary Ann, Professor, the skipper, they're all there with Gilligan. It's a big, it's a big party every snap. Third down and 14. And Kansas calls a timeout. We'll step aside. Back to Lawrence in a moment. Third down and 14 for Kansas, trailing 47 to 6. And it could be worse. Michael Bishop's first touchdown journey was fumbled at the one yard line before he crossed the goal line and, and rolled through the back line of the end zone for a touchback. They still haven't punted today. No, they have not. One time James Garcia has been on the field is the hold for Martin Gramatica. Option and Curry stays on his feet. Gets about four yards, but he will be 10 short of where he needed to get to. And Garcia averaging almost 46 yards a punt. He'd be number four in the NCAA, but he's only averaging 2.7 punts per game coming into today. That's going to drop. You have to be like between three and a half and four punts a game to qualify. Well, this, kid, this kid's not going to get on the board because of the offensive efficiency. Matt Tyler, this is his seventh punt. That is about 35% of what Garcia has done all year. Exactly. Garcia has 20 punts coming into the eighth game of the year. And this is off the side of Tyler's foot. And David Allen won't get a chance. That might have hit a foot. Did it touch? It looked like it was stepped on. Guess not, because they're pointing in the direction of Kansas State. 10.54 left. series everything your car does well it does brilliantly I think that little fella across the path of the Kansas Jayhawks today really well look at those eyes that's like Michael Bishop's eyes intense right now 47 to 6 Adam Helm in at quarterback for Kansas State Bishop done for the day more of the same for the Wildcats Helm rips off a big gainer to the 43 yard line not he got 18. Not going to change packages because you change quarterbacks. This guy can execute well as well. Here we see him running the option. We saw the live play. We're in the quarterback draw. He makes great decisions. He's got some foot quickness himself. Now he throws the football. Nice touch. Gets the football down the football field. Intensely under throwing it so his receiver can make a recovery back to the football to make the play. He's a little bigger than Bishop. He's 6'3 and 220, a junior from Overland Park. And the delay to Marlon Charles. And Charles gets a couple. Set up second down. You don't see many schools, even the schools with elite players and tremendous records that have great depth and Kansas State seems to have outstanding depth well they do everywhere now they're on a nice roll right now and, and, and it starts to almost feed on itself kids come to Kansas State because I think their style of play defensively if I'm a good high school defensive player Kansas State showcases that those talents they throw the football and they're balanced throw it and run it offensively it's a good option that started with Bobby Stoops now Bobby's brother Mike the coordinator of the defense two terrific young coaches 
Bobby's now down uh, in the state of Florida, coaching for Steve Spurrier. Helm keeps. It'll be third down and six. Helm is a big kid. I mean, there's some uh, definite size to this young man. And he's a coach's kid. His father, J.D., is an assistant at BYU and later on with the Kansas City Chiefs. He's a guy that walked on in Manhattan. Helm on third down, complete. And forward progress will be enough for a first down. Everett Burnett with his first catch of the day, number 83. Here's what Kansas State has left. They will go to 8-0 for the first time in school history. Baylor, then Nebraska. Red Letter Day on November 14th for the Wildcats. They've been pointing to that one for a long, long time. Have not defeated Nebraska since 1968. And they don't have a gimme on November 21st by any stretch of the imagination. Missouri is a very talented team. No doubt. Nebraska, their seventh home game. Remarkable to have seven home games. And a pick up to the 41-yard line. Let's take a look at how the matchup has gone with Kansas State and Nebraska. Everybody else, take a look. They've... they've 37-3, and, and they've blown them away by an average margin of victory of 27 points. It's the flips against Nebraska. 0-3, and, and they've been outscored by 30. So everything is just totally reversed when they go and up against that sea of red. Well, it's been reversed for a lot of folks when they play Nebraska. Right, absolutely. But I think Nebraska has brought themselves back to the pack a little bit more this year. I think this might be the year for Kansas State. Late pitch, Marlon Charles. Running hard, first down of the 31-yard line. Little option to the short side, the formation. Helm with a quick decision. Really <laughs> didn't have much choice but to get rid of the football before he got detonated. And Charles showing nice effort after initial contact, dragging the tackler, Jamie, Jamie Harris, down the football field for extra yards. Second team offensive line up front for K-State with the big lead. Charles gets the call again into the secondary. Charles, can he get in? Touchdown! Tremendous run by the senior from Kansas City. That's the thing, Drew. When you're on a football team of this caliber, this much quality, you're fighting for playing time. So they put their substitutes in, and it's no, it's no cakewalk. Kansas defensive unit's tired right now. They've been on the field a ton of snaps, way too many plays, way too much time. And you bring in a fresh set of troops that are pretty good football players, and it's not an easy chore to, to, to hold the tie. 500 yards offense going. Yeah, you were talking two. about it earlier. I mean, Marlon Charles is a guy that maybe gets 20 carries a game in a lot of schools. Sure. Used to get 20 carries a game at Kansas State. Yes, he did. Grammatica to make it 54 to 6. Total offense in the game, 502 to 47. Wow. Well, under that poncho at the top of your screen with the baseball cap sticking out is Zach Wegner, who is the starting quarterback for the University of Kansas, but he has done for the rest of the year in all probability suffered his second concussion in as many weeks and also a lacerated finger very early in the football game mm. so it'll be jay alexander's team the rest of the way for kansas 54 to 6 grammatica he had another kickoff curry drops it and just Punches it out of bounds at the 19-yard line. Let's take a look at that run again by Marlon Charles. Well, it starts up front. He gets a great seam to operate. He, the line of scrimmage is captured. He gets through without being touched. Now he starts to make the moves, breaks the tackle, gets to the perimeter, and starts to outrun people and uh, finalizes. That's just a great effort by the guys up front to get it going, and then Charles to finalize. But Kansas is in a mode right now. A little bit of fatigue coming up the step short, and now they're starting to just reach out and arm tackle rather than lay the lumber on folks. And off 
to Julius Bruce. No gain. And we take a look at the numbers brought to you by Sitco. And as you can imagine, I mean, this number this number will kill you when you're minus three. But look at the total yards. Five football fields to less than a half. Well, that's tough to compete at that point. I thought the time of possession would be more than the nine and a half minutes that, uh, that it is. But the number of snaps that uh, Kansas's defense has been on the football field is starting to take its toll. And they hope to be able to run the football today. That they were fairly confident they could run the football. They have netted six yards prior to that carry. Maybe they're up to eight. Chris Johnson makes the tackle on Julius Bruce, the senior from Olathe, Kansas. Yeah, this second unit for Kansas State, they had some players. And Monty Basel, any, any college in the country would take Monty Basel on, on their football team. And they're all put together. You can see that every single kid, they're committed to the weight room and they're committed to the program. There's no doubt about it. Sloppy field, Bruce chased by Conley, slips down, and it is another three and out. We were talking to Mike Stoops the other day, unbelievable stat for Kansas State. This year, about 45% of the time, their defense forces the offense to three downs and out. Right, and in 95 or 96, when they were number one in the country, he said it was 50% of the time then. And so, and today, Kansas has had three and out more than 50% of their offensive possessions. And that is a key in this game. One, two, three and out puts a lot of pressure on the defense. Tyler to punt it, and David Allen backing up. Wow. And still backing up. This one's going to turn into a monster. A <laughs> monster boot. Wow. It's still rolling. It's still rolling. It's going to tilt inside the nine, maybe get to the eight-yard line. Now Davison going to blow on it a little bit. <laughs> it is finally down at the eight. Turn to our stat magician Tim Simmons. Tim, how many yards? 76 yard punt. Woo! Not bad. Well, the executive producers of today's ball game are Arthur Smith and Bill Borson, the coordinating producer for college football. He is Roy Hamilton. Today's game has been produced by Robert Steinfeld, directed by Ken Miller, and the vice president of field operations, Andrea Jenkins. And every week, those folks do a great job. They sure do, Drew. Helm hands off, and David Allen finds a little bit of an opening. He's still going to the 33-yard line. He, it may be third, fourth team guys, but they want to play. They want to show their stuff. Absolutely. As you say, everybody's fighting for playing time. Everybody's fighting for opportunity. And when the opportunity presents itself, a quality guy like David Allen, who's one of the best kick return people in the country, why can't he carry it from the line of scrimmage? Well, he shows he certainly can. The future is bright for this Kansas State Wildcat program. This is the most points that Kansas State has ever scored in the series, and it's the biggest win for Kansas State in this particular battle. The Sunflower Seed Spectacular. Yeah, their biggest win prior to this was 46 to nothing, so that could go down here with four minutes left. Let's take a look at our Dr. Pepper player of the game. Well, who else? Michael Bishop. He was great throwing it, and he was great running it today, Dave. Right, you had 28 yards on that one fumble to his rushing numbers, and it's astounding the number of yards this guy put up on the, on the field today. Just a great effort by a true competitor. Came in a little bit gimpy, people thought, with a hip flexor problem. Not so. His adrenaline started to flow, and his competitive nature took over, and he grabbed this game by the throat and wouldn't let it go. Second down and five. Allen again. And this time he runs into J.J. Johnson, who holds on. It'll be third down. 
300 yards rushing unofficially today for Kansas State, a season high in the 90s. When they get more than 200 yards on the ground, they are 30, soon to be 31 in zip. They've also won 28 straight games now. Or no, they don't have a 100-yard rusher yet. But they've won 27 straight games. They're 4-0 this year when they have a 100-yard rusher. And Michael Bishop should have been if that big fumble hadn't been subtracted from his totals. But he is Superman. Third and four. Helm on the option. Late pitch. Allen. Playing a room. He can scoot now to the 40-yard line. Another Kansas State first down. So we've seen Hickson. We've seen Marlon Charles, Frank Murphy, and David Allen. Well, the fullbacks also. We've seen Goolsby. Watch number 34 in the white jersey. First Eric down. Gooden. Watch the block that he gets right here. But boom, down to the turf. I mean, how many knockdowns have we seen out of these running backs? And that's the difference in the football game, as we said before. Some Jayhawks have been on the turf. Very few times you see a Wildcat prone. That's the difference in the game, and that's why Kansas State has been rolling up the yards they have. That was the 14th time today they've had a play of 15 yards or more. That's a ton. A sizable gain on first down for David Allen. Clock winding inside two minutes to play. Well, for the University of Kansas, you put this one in the rearview mirror and you get ready for North Texas. And then their final weekend, they traveled to Ames, Iowa to take on Iowa State. And Terry Allen felt that his team could be much better in 98 than they were in 97. And yet the record might not reflect that. And I don't think there's any question there are a much better team than they were in 97. Well, I think offensively, they're light years from where they were in 97. And uh, in this this Kansas uh, program is, is on the right track to respectability and more, I think. Allen hit hard in the backfield. 99 jumping in there was Marcus Rogers. This is what Michael Bishop was all about today. This is the BMW play of the game. Check this thing out. Michael Bishop. Now, this is not a design quarterback draw. The play breaks down, and when this is when he's most dangerous. You defend everything, and then he's off to the races, and he makes something out of nothing. Look at the contact here. I mean, he's going to fight and scratch. That's the effort that Michael Bishop gave all day long. He's a running back at the quarterback position, and he will fight you to the last second and the last inch. You know, the offensive coaches spend uh, a great deal of time designing plays and working on different plays. And sometimes it's Michael Bishop drawn in the dirt saying, all right, all you guys go out. I'm going to drop back. Third down. An unsportsmanlike penalty. I'm going to drop back and uh, let's see what happens. When you have a, a player like him, the defensive coordinator's nightmares are when you have everything defended and then a talent like him, that'll make something out of nothing. And he does that regularly. I mean, you may have all 10 people to, and then you have to decide when to spy him. When you do spy him, the spy's got to get him to the ground. That's no easy task either. David Allen. Yeah, he runs much bigger than his size. 6'1", about 200 pounds. You know what would be a shame? And the NCAA is endeavoring to do the right thing, get one versus two in a championship-like game. But if Ohio State, UCLA, and Kansas State, let's say, all go unbeaten. What about Tennessee? And Tennessee also. Right. Let's not forget about the Vols. Right. And all four of those schools right. are unbeaten. Somebody's left out. I mean, two schools are left out. Exactly. I think, you know, unless you have a playoff format, there's subjectivity involved to all of it. Yep. On fourth down, on the option, Allen. I don't know how he did it, but he got the first down. Three blue jerseys had him dead to rights in the backfield, and Allen snuck through. And that will be, well, maybe not. The clock stops. So... Might have one more snap. Got to move the chains. It stops on the yeah. first down. Yeah, and as soon as they move it, they'll start it up again, and that'll be that. So it is a final. As you see Oklahoma leading Iowa State here in Lawrence. The Wildcats prevail again, 54-6 to over the University of Kansas. So the Governor's Cup will stay in Manhattan. And Bill Snyder's possession. We're back in a moment. 
Kansas State Wildcats and Michael Bishop roll on 8-0 for the first time in school history. Number four in the land. They were impressive today. 54-6 over Kansas. The Jayhawks dropped to 3-6 on the year. We'll plan to join us next Saturday morning at 11.30 for our next Dr. Pepper Big 12 football game of the week. As always, check your local listings. Again, the final 54-6, Kansas State over Kansas. Thanks so much for joining us today. I'm Drew Goodman for Dave Lapham and Jim Knott saying so long from a rainy Lawrence, Kansas. Have a great Halloween, everybody.